but I think the development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top of it. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. So you said there's lights in the sky? The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's, that's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. Welcome to Troubled Minds Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and tonight we're here with my good friend Jennifer in Missouri, Jennifer H., and we're, we'd are we like to say hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. What's going on, guys? It is Tuesday night, which is one of the nights we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. You know what those things are. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle propaganda and the general feeling that we live in the upside down as always we are doing this live to include you as i always say the secret weapon of troubled minds is not me it is you because this is a conversation i'm calling it the great conversation which means we range far and wide we make no excuses and we leave no stone unturned and that's what this is all about and of course if you want to be part of the show tonight we're talking about the saturn death cult the saturn death cult we're going to get to that and all kinds of exciting stuff and if you know anything about this or if you think this is real or any of the rest of that, give us a call. Phone number is 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037, and we'll put you on the show. And if you got questions for myself or for Jennifer or uh, just thoughts on, well, is this a real thing or is this uh, one of those things that's sort of concocted as, oh, I don't know, I don't know, mythology or nonsense or everywhere in between. You guys know. You guys know how we do this, uh, kind of look at things in the, the sense of, well, could it be real? Could it not be real? And um, again, everywhere in between. That's what this is all about. Uh, we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. And of course, we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Please join the Discord at TroubledMinds.org. Click the Discord link. You can uh, also be on the show that way. And also, please download the Fringe app at Fringe. Uh, sorry, no, no. Uh, Discord. Sorry. Fringe Discord. Join that as well. It's the same program. It's uh, just a different chat room. Fringe.fm slash chat. It's a Discord, of course, is free. It's a free voice and chat client that uh, really hasn't been in the censorship censorship business until uh, just recently. Just several days ago, they started uh, labeling things as misinformation, which is unfortunate because the thought police have uh, infiltrated every corner of everything, it seems. But okay, so and then uh, one final thing before we say hi to Jennifer, please download the Fringe app. You can find that at the iTunes 
iTunes and the Android App Store. It's completely free, and it's the easiest way to listen to Troubled Minds. Just uh, smash the play button at 7 p.m. Pacific time, Monday through Thursday, and you'll get little old me. You'll get little old you and whoever else might to be uh, would like to be part of these conversations. Like I said, the uh, the actual secret weapon of Troubled Minds is, of course, you. So let's let's uh, without further ado, let's let's go to let's go to Jennifer. Jennifer, are you there? Test one two. How's the technology holding up? Yeah. I think it's on. Can nice. you hear me? They're loud and clear. Loud and clear. Working so far so good. So uh so what, what how are you tonight? How are you tonight? Let's begin there. I'm good. I'm doing real good. Okay. <laughs> good. Just thinking on this and yeah. <laughs> thinking about how to how to cover it, you know. So it, cuz it's real big, isn't it? It's real big. I was I spent uh, several hours reading up on this uh, this afternoon, and um, it got to a point. It just got too big. I was like, "Okay, that's it. I'm done. Enough. I can't do any more because <laughs> there's no way we'll get through all this tonight anyway." Uh, so, so interestingly, this uh, we is, might. We, we you might. think so? You th- maybe, maybe. All right, all right. There's a we'll lot push, to this. Uh, we'll do a push note. Yeah, exactly. Push note. So we'll just do that. That's fine. That's fine. Or, or if, <laughs> if, if, if it all falls apart, we'll end up and just having to do part two, which is fine with me if that's fine with you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Hopefully we can get it, though. Okay, we'll try. We'll try. So, so what we we're talking about tonight? Yeah, we can do this. Uh, is is this idea of a Saturn death cult? The Saturn death cult, and it, it kind of goes back in well, cosmological terms, pre humans right i mean it literally goes back to uh well something called the the purple dawn which we'll get to in just a moment but uh, as as far as much as i kept reading here it, it was just a layer after layer of uh, not just cosmology stuff about uh you know sort of an alternative cosmology to not just our uh our our uh, solar system here but also to uh maybe an idea of an electric universe and i mean there's a whole bunch of stuff kind of packed into this but the idea the overall idea here is Maybe I should let you do this. What's so before we get going tonight? Let's kind of just throw it out there. This is what the general idea of the Saturn Death Cult is, and then we'll get to the beginnings of this and sort of the the Purple Dawn, and then where it goes from there. But in general terms, what is this about? Like it, it started again thousands of years ago. They say I think sixty thousand BC is what I what I read for the Purple Dawn. But then how does that relate to what's happening now in in modern days with uh, the the Saturn Death Cult? Uh, no, no, no pressure. Big challenge. Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the Saturn Death Cult. You know, is it's a combination, like you said, of a cosmology that challenges um, modern science cosmology. It postulates an electric universe. Um, it also <clears throat> has a differing sort of version of why history went the way it was it gives history human history more of an occult drive so it it says basically the saturn death cult um mythos kind of says that history itself is driven by a cult uh, an occult drive and that the history of the world is um, that there's a secret, basically. And the secret is that history is controlled by an elite group that drives the culture of humanity as a whole in a certain direction. And so basically, it's not just like, and when you think about the Saturn death cult, it's talking about a culture. So you have to think in terms of culture and what that means the term of a culture and how it 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 goes over things like race or um religion even or anything of that kind it deals more in the aspect of the culture of societies and how it's a death culture and that there's an all-pervasive death culture in the world driven by the Saturn death cult. It's not a person you can't pick out and point out at celebrities and individuals and say that these people are members of the Saturn death cult. That's not exactly, you could do that. People want you to do that. 
But that's not exactly what it is. It's more about the cultural situation that humanity is in and how it got there and how it's driven by human toil and sacrifice in order to benefit a chosen few. And like I said, the occult influences on history and the collective personality of the world we live in and the, the thoughts and the actions of our society from the highest echelons of our society, the, the most elite down to the lowest of us and what's driving it all and why and, and questions, you know, like, um, why are certain individuals allowed to decide the histories of the entire world? And who's controlling the process of historical events? And it, it's driven by the death cult of Saturn. The death cult of and Saturn. And Saturn. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and the journey from Saturn having been the true sun of the Earth and the Earth as a satellite, along with Mars, that's the cosmology of Saturn and the time period before the purple dawn of even mankind going back to infinity, you know, basically up to a hundred thousand years is what's postulated. And, and then from a hundred thousand to 60,000, like 60,000 to a hundred thousand years ago, that window where you have a lot of like catechismic events occurring and we can go into all that. But then the memory of the earliest of mankind, that there's a belief that mankind remembers when Saturn was still much closer to the, um, to the Earth. And the memory of the cataclysmic event scarred the subconscious of humanity. And that all, <clears throat> pardon me, that all of the mythos of society is a reflection of those events. And of that trauma, of that catechismic event, that cosmic catechismic event. And then that our society is a ritual. Our history is a ritual that is reflecting the cosmic catechism. And it is driven to a very nefarious extent and a type of insanity, in fact. And it is uh, that there is actually an agenda for this, these continuing rituals. Okay. And I'll leave it there. I'll call it a culture. And it's all, I would say one last thing that, sure. I, I, it, that I think that we have our, our surface history, and then you have the, the, the secret, the hidden history. And so it's more of the, it's the occult history, basically, and the reason for it. And that's the Saturn death cult. It's not, it's not actually like a club, per se. Okay, that, well done. That's a much better than I could have done here. And so, and so the idea here, it, 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 it's pretty, pretty, pretty wild in that it's it's sort of like a secret history of humanity. And uh, just like Jen was saying here, that we, we you know, it, you can point out and say, you know, oh, was, you know, Saturn Death Cult. Look what's happening over there, or or look at uh, celebrities like you were describing. And so it's not that. It's it's almost to the point where we are all part of this, and only some people recognize it. It's it's sort of one of those esoteric things that's, um, you know, some people recognize, some people don't, and it's and it's built into symbolism. It's built into society, like Jennifer was saying. It's built into so many things that uh, we we have. Come Come to accept that this is the way things are. And in, in, in a sense, we talk about this all the time on Troubled Minds, just not directly as well in the Saturn Death Cult. But, but in these terms, it seems to be that uh, a lot of this makes sense to me. A lot of it makes sense in, I'm not sure about the cosmology, it seems to be a little bit woo-woo for my taste, but well, this is Troubled Minds after all. But then after that, once you get into some of this, like uh, the societal stuff, uh, it seems to track. It seems to really be like, okay, well, I guess maybe I'm the knucklehead because uh, a lot of this really lines up with exactly what we've been talking about the Epstein stuff about the elites and you know rules for me but not for thee 
all the rest of that stuff, right? And then, of course, this ritual stuff, like uh, like uh, f- infamously, uh, Alex Jones broke into the Bohemian Grove, right? And there's supposedly like a statue of Moloch in there, right? The, for the, the ch- child sacrifice stuff. And, and all of this ties in. It's it's like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Uh, that, yeah. That's... like Go ahead, go ahead. With, with the, like what you're saying about the statue, some people said that they think that it's Moloch, and other people have said that they think that it's an owl. If it's an owl, it would represent Minerva and Artemis, and they're saying that that would represent, you know, that those are representations of the dark side of Venus, because Venus ties into this cosmology too, and and they're doing the cremation of care to Venus. So, but it's still Saturn worship. It's still Saturn worship. So it's really strange. Really strange. All right. So with the, so- with the Bohemian group. Yeah, the Bohemian Grove stuff, and again, so that would be uh, your your you know our elites, as as the term is. We hate to use the term, right? Uh, shout out to Kelly out there. He's like, I hate that term because they aren't elite; they're just a holes. <laughs> and that's well, that's probably more accurate. But okay, so that's what we're talking about tonight. We're here with Jennifer in Missouri, and we're talking about the Saturn Death Cult. And so the question for you guys tonight is this: All right. How much do you know about this? Is this something this this black cube we'll get into tonight and some of the some of the cosmology, of course, of where this began, where, of course, if you've never heard of this, where Saturn was actually the original sun of the solar system. Uh, pretty wild stuff here. But have you heard of this? Is this have you heard of this sort of in peripheral terms? Have you heard of this at all ever? And as we go and sort of put this story together, is this going to be one of those things that uh, you start to go? Mm, it's all making sense. You tell me. Love to hear your thoughts on all this and again if you have questions for myself or for jennifer of course give us a call 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 you can also click the discord link at troubledminds.org that's the official website and the discord link is there the phone number is there everything's there everything you need we're streaming on the website itself by the way so if you're uh, ever confused on where to find troubled minds there you go just go straight to the website okay so so where do we begin here shall we start with the cosmology of this and the purple dawn i think that makes the most sense to sort of describe how the the idea of Saturn as the first sun of this solar system kind of came about. What do you say? Okay, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> and that's, that's a good place to start. Yeah, it's so, as good as any. Okay. Go right ahead. Yeah, good as any. All right, so <clears throat> you have like 100,000 years ago that Saturn was a it wasn't captured by the by the the sun's heliosphere it saturn itself was spiraling through the universe for how long nobody knows on it you have well not on it but you have saturn and you have saturn's moons and earth and mars are said to be were moons of Saturn, is what they say. And that there might have been, some people say eight of these moons, and others say nine, that kind of thing. Some people say that Jupiter may have also been, but Jupiter most likely, they think, actually belonged to the Sun. But it's an electrical universe, and there's a plasma sheath off of Saturn, because Saturn would be like a brown dwarf star. And it was enveloping the Earth at this point, and the Earth was in a phase-locked position to Saturn, kind of like our moon. And it's spiraling its way, you know, through space, essentially, and it's running into all kinds of different things out in the cosmos, and it's interacting with those, and there's, you know, um, creatures, flora and fauna change, there's rise and falls of creation, on the Earth as it's moving along with Saturn. But then Saturn begins to electrically be drawn, essentially, to the more powerful electric field of the Sun. And so it's being kind of drawn towards the the heliosphere. As it's doing this, there's the creation of a Birkeley current, a Birkeley current is something that can be demonstrated with um, electricity in a laboratory. It's kind of like where um, it's almost like a string of pearls is a good way to describe it, but it's electrical. At this point, when Saturn is kind of 
beginning to draw closer to the sun's heliosphere, it's drawing the Earth out of its phase-locked position into a more, um, like the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole, were located on either side over in the Pacific um, and on the opposite side of the Earth at the, the bulge, basically. There's a bulge now at our North and South Pole that would be on the other sides of the Earth if you were to turn it at a diagonal. And the North Pole itself was being was facing um, the South Pole of Saturn as it's dragging along closer to the heliosphere, drawn electromagnetically towards the solar system that we're in now, in the orbit that we're currently occupying. As it does that, the Earth can see the South Pole and the hexagon of Saturn and it creates a uh, like a plasma bubble because brown dwarfs are full of water, and that's scientific, um, accepted scientifically. And so, but all the water on the Earth begins to kind of be drawn up there to the North Pole. Anyway, that's carrying on. And the Earth is phase-locked, though, but at, from 100,000 years to 60,000 years, um, that's when you start to have the flare-ups because Saturn begins to kind of brush against that electric field. As it's doing that, the brown dwarf star starts to... Um, when it does this, it, it's so hard to explain. I hope it makes sense. <laughs> You're making sense. I hope I'm making sense. You're doing way better than I okay, could. Okay, real, real, real quick before you do that, if you guys are watching the stream, over on the left side here, I've got it full screen. What she's describing is actually depicted exactly as she's describing here. So you see the Earth on the bottom uh, in between uh, the, the Saturn here on the, above the North Pole is Mars as well. And so that we'll get into that as well tonight. But this is exactly what she's describing. Saturn on top is sort of the original sun of the solar system. And then the Earth uh, is directly below it sort of locked in this, uh, uh, tidally locked in this pattern with it. So there, it doesn't revolve uh, in regular terms as we know the the, the uh, solar system does now. This is how it was locked. And uh, there we go. Continue. We got about a uh, minute, minute and a half before we got to take a break, just to let you know. Okay. So it's carrying on um, at the 100,000 to 60,000 year mark, phase locked. After somewhere in that time period, um, about 60,000 years ago, they think at that point, once it reached the heliosphere, that it became axial alignment. And that's what we're looking at, where it's fa we're facing more of the South Pole, and we begin to kind of also spiral. And a lot of the conical symbology is uh, demonstrating that. And that at this point, too, still covered by the opaque plasma sheath of Saturn, enveloped in it like an egg, there are still no signs of stars. It's void and chaos. That's what humans, if they were around, would have seen at that point. And we'll just stop there. And then it goes on from there to the about 12,000 years. Man's, mankind's memory only goes back, they think, to about 12,000 years, where they start thinking this in state, like in, in rocks and caves with petroglyphs and such. Exactly right. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. We're here with Jennifer in Missouri, and we're talking about the Saturn death cult. Well done, Jennifer. So far, so good. Way better than I could have done. <laughs> we're going to keep on trucking here talking about this. And the question tonight is, what do you know about this? The idea of the Saturn death cult. Is this a real thing? Is this a real cosmology? Is this pervasive in all aspects of society? What's going on with this? Love to hear your thoughts tonight. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957. 1037. Like I said, we're here with Jennifer in Missouri. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More Saturn Death Cult, Odd Cosmology, The Past and the Future when we return. Andrew Calls. Be right back. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. We're here tonight with my good friend Jennifer in Missouri, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. And of course, we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Tonight, we're taking your phone calls as we discuss the idea of the Saturn Death Cult. What exactly does this mean? How far back does this go? And what does it have to do with society today? 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And we'll put you on the show. It is as easy as that. Let's welcome back Jennifer. Are you there, Jennifer? Test one, two. I am. Welcome I back. So. <laughs> I believe so. Right on. And loud and clear. So confirmed. <laughs> you are still there. Right on. So, so okay. So we left off with this cosmology of... Saturn, okay? Meaning that uh, Saturn, in, in the very first instance here, is, well, um, the first sun of the solar system, right? So, it is in, in, in an odd term, it, they say that it used to be a, a brown dwarf star, and it, had, it, it was uh, synced in an odd way, kind of floating through the, the galaxy, I guess, or the universe, or whatever this was. And then, uh, there's a whole bunch that kind of gets, it kind of spins off the rails from there. But we do have a phone call, so do you want anything to add real quick before we take this call? Um, uh, no, take the call. All right, let's take, take the phone the call. call. Uh, uh, let, just remind me if you're getting an echo. I turned that on so you can hear like the, the bumper music and stuff. So if I forget to turn it Thank off you. and you're hearing the echo, just let me know. <laughs> just remind me. I just killed it right no, now. No, so. it's fine. Okay, my, my bad on that. All right, so 702-957-1037. Let's go to, I have no idea who this is. Welcome to Trouble Minds. You're on with Mike and Jennifer. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Chuck. I'm calling from Delaware. What's happening to Chuck in Delaware? Go right ahead. Welcome to Troubled Minds. Okay, so I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, and the first one is kind of like, and like, I don't want, I'm no authority or anything. And like, some of it, like, some of it seems trivial, but like, really, like what you guys are talking about with um, the planets, like almost acting as a sun or whatever, it's almost like, I feel like, how come, how can they not be like, acting like a sun to the moons around them, right? So there's life on the moons, right? Like, we're potentially. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I get so what like, you're saying. Like, so, so, so not necessarily it being, uh, I mean, like, yeah, the whole concept of Saturn being a sun to the Earth or being, like, some sort of radiance to the Earth. But, like, what if, like, and this is where it gets trivial, like, where, what if we descended from that long, long ago, and we kind of like skipping from one rock to the other to eventually this one. And it's so ancient that we'd have no like real concept of it. And, um, it's just, it, there's just something to ponder about and to think about because like, like that they're getting, uh, that radiance and that energy from the, like the planet, almost like a second sun. So there's very possibly life on these moons and still life on these moons. And like, who knows if it's projecting some sort of, you know, some sort of uh, frequency or another consciousness, you know, and that's where it gets trivial. Right. Um, but in terms of like the death cult stuff, um, I, I hope I don't go off on a tangent here or anything, but like the term as above, so below, and you, you, you showed a, like a little um, picture on the left-hand side of Saturn and the earth or whatever, and, you know, being about below it, so to speak. So like we are in the middle of, a microcosm and that macrocosm. And we were like smack dab in the middle of that and having to figure that out. Right. Um, I think there is an application or like a scientific, I'm not saying it's right, but there's a scientific reason behind all this wacky stuff you hear about with people ingesting like blood and bodily fluids of people and like animals, children or whatever. Um, I think there's a scientific basis behind it and a reasoning behind it that's just so coveted that we can't even begin to really know about it. But the heavenly bodies have such a uh, interaction with our lower selves that I think that there's something that just really isn't being talked about. But I feel like it's like I feel like I'm scratching the surface here. Do you understand? Like I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. The, the, there's a lot to this. Go, go ahead, Jennifer, if you want to address that. I, I got some things to say too. Cool. Yeah, I think that they are these rituals that do involve sacrifice, these sacrificial rituals, <clears throat> these um, mass blood sacrifices, as in wars, and the power 
struggle, the debt-based slavery, as a ritual. They believe that by doing that, they're communicating on a cosmological, they're affecting cosmic forces, and that they are uh, interacting with the, a deity of sorts, a creator, God, that they think is, because um, th they see Saturn as a creator of sorts, because it's the first sun. And they're trying to communicate and change the outcome of events, kind of controlling their death, birth, and rebirth, hoping to mm -hmm. reincarnate in higher and higher elite statuses to eventually have complete control and create a uh, their own golden age that they remember, or that's taught by the priests of Saturn in the future, after a doomsday event that may happen again, in their opinion. Right. Um, it, so, are you suggesting that they have some sort of consciousness, like the like the, the heavenly bodies, like the planets or whatever? Or like, I think it's a perversion of the initial rituals. I think that it became more and more depraved over the thousands of years, and there was. I think that they went to more and more extremes in order to shrink the number of chosen elites. And they believed, too, okay. that the ritualistic nature of their, um, of their occult acts were going to communicate to Saturn and elevate them out of just being under the whim of a, a god that destroys its own creation. It would elevate them up to be on par with it and possibly even create a breakaway civilization where they are no longer under the whims of a dangerous god mm. god men so i think that they're trying to through um and we know about stem cell research and there's the old stories about bathory and the consuming of blood and and transfusions and we know about that and that they believe that there's some elixir of life or youth in it so it's kind of dark, and Saturn has that mythos. They've taken the mythos of what happened, and they've twisted it, and it's become very perverse and insane. And it's very obvious to everyone now, with the symbology, if, if this is, in fact, going on. And I think that they are trying to um, elevate themselves so that they are no longer powerless in case an event like that should happen again. Because it was a catechismic event. Anyway, Mike. Well, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, uh, Ch Chuck in Delaware. Uh, so, so what are your thoughts here? Do, do Have you heard of this before? Clearly you seem to be knowledgeable about the, the Saturn death cult. Do you think this is real? Or do you think this is uh, one of those mythologies sort of made up to scare children back into their beds before dark? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I genuinely like not... Like what? I, what I've been re like, I haven't really been reading anything. It's more or less like I feel like um, the Hebrew people, and I don't want to like single out a group of people or anything like that. But like, I feel like they have knowledge. Well, this goes back to like, the Egyptians and everything, and knowing the nature of reality and how the lower, the microbiological <laughs> world plays a part on the, the the higher order of things, which is us. And then um, after that, the uh, the macrocosm of planets and the sun and moon, especially and how the moon can affect uh, those lower entities within us. And that's really the underworld that they talk about, I feel like, in like shamanism and everything, and how like those things interact with our uh, lower constituents and everything. And like I, I just genuinely feel like there's something to it. And I, I'm, I'm not, and that, like I said in the beginning, like I'm no authority. I just feel like this is a really good guess. And I think that there's something, like, and when they say demon worship, there's no such thing as demons. It's, it's microbiological entities. And, like, people can, like, get lost in the woo-woo as much as they want, but I genuinely think there's a scientific basis behind all of this. Yeah, that, that wouldn't Regardless surprise me at all. Some sort of, you know. Yeah, good take, good take. Let me ask you, where, where did you find the show? First time caller, obviously. Uh, love, to, love to have new people join the conversations. How'd you find us? Oh, well. Well, I, I mean, first of all, I like uh, I like the live stuff, and like there's another show I watch that's totally different, and it's like a, they do like music review and stuff. So I, I I think it's really cool how like it's like like old school TV like at nighttime where you could like call in and like talk to the TV, but like we're not in the 90s anymore, so it's kind of like an upgrade. So like I basically just saw it on like the YouTube thing, and it said you know live, and 
you know, all the different stuff that, and the different topics I'm looking into. And I'm not like really looking into, I'm looking more into like research, like microbiological research. And the more and more I'm looking at it, the more I'm thinking like these things have a consciousness. And the fact that like, you know, certain like parasites and all these different other microbes, they respond to the moon cycles and that there, there's probably a higher and higher order to all this that we don't really understand. And then it starts, you know, you know, bridging the gap to astrology and like all these, like, I, I just really think like there's something to all of it. And that's really just, that's just how I feel about it. That's all. Gotcha. Which, which again is exactly why we talk about this stuff and, and in the way we do it, because I think, uh, just kind of bumping ideas off of each other and, uh, you know, kind of growing together. That's what this is all about. I, I, again, I appreciate you finding us. Thank you for the amazing takes here. Thanks for, thanks for caring. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the phone call. And, uh, you're welcome anytime. Uh, we go oh, Monday through Thursday at 7 PM Pacific. And, uh, thanks for the phone call, my friend. Yeah. Thanks for popping up, y'all. <clears throat> you got it. Have a great night. There you go. That's Chuck in Delaware, first time caller. Found us on YouTube. How about that? How about that? Uh, anything to add to what he said there at the end, Jennifer? Yes. With uh, with the thing about Egypt, he mentioned. There's some speculation that Egypt, ancient ancient Egypt, that even the pyramid itself or the Sphinx, they think for certain, could have been existing during the flare it could be coming from it could have existed since 12,000 years ago because they're saying that it must it might have been you know it's a, it was a wasteland at, at, as we see it today but at that time it would have been very tropical and very you know lush type of thing going on and they think that, it, that there could have been Atlanteans because of the um that the Egyptians could have been the Atlanteans and it's a really wild theory but that because of the electrical, um, the way that it was interacting, the plasma sheath and everything, the water levels, there was no wind or, or rain. There were no um, meteorological events going on because we didn't have a sun, the, the sun we have today. And the way this was working was the water levels would have been much lower and there would have been more land, um, surf, more land surface. However, when that flare happened, when it came into contact with the heliosphere, all of that would have changed. And so the, uh, the water itself would have all been dropped from either the North Pole or it could have been the ice rings of Saturn coming in contact with the Earth and raining down in a great deluge, um, as mentioned in the biblical accounts. So I don't know. I liked what you mentioned about um, Egypt. And then as far as the insects and everything, the insects see better on an ultraviolet level, similar to what had been seen under the plasma sheath of Saturn. Um, the ultraviolet lighting on the Earth, the red and blue ultraviolet spectrum, they see better in that spectrum than they do on the um, red and green spectrum of our sun we have today. And also reptilians, uh, all lizards and things like that, do better in, under that kind of lighting. And most mammalians, even last thing, sorry, most mammalians um, can live or, and are kind of prone to not being nocturnal. And if you do some research on that, there's some speculation that humanity may have been also primarily nocturnal before it was um, biurnal. And that uh, human beings themselves though they can't create vitamin C and they have to consume it the same as pigs do, also humans and pigs the, do, but the other mammalians create their own vitamin C. So I think that's very interesting. Yeah, a lot to this. And again, like I said, the, the more I was reading this, the more it uh, kind of went off in like a thousand different directions. And I was just like, oh, God, I got to I got I got to clear out myself here. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's super wild. Uh, OK, yes. so let's get back to the Purple Dawn just so we can kind of fill that in. And then we can s start with uh, how this process began with the cult of Saturn, the, the sorry, Saturn death cult, let me say appropriately. And then uh, and how this got sort of it, just be, be, to become this pervasive thing, even to today in this whole cube worship we'll get into tonight and uh so the rest of that so so let's skip ahead a little bit if you can uh and, and i'm with you too i'm going to help you with this i got a bunch of stuff here to look to, to, to look at as well but but um so don't 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 feel don't feel all the pressure on the on your shoulders here but but uh so so let's skip a little ahead to this idea of the purple dawn and then uh how maybe this the sun sort of uh the, the real sun came into the into play here okay so the sun and the saturn 
it gets captured and is the the Birkeland current is basically shorted out. So the plas- let there be light moment is what this references to in the mythos and everything. They're saying that that purple void is um, short circuited by the more powerful electric heliosphere. So sorry, it sounds really weird, but so it short circuits it, weakens it, and then that plasma sheath becomes translucent and starts to weaken. At this point, we start to experience seasons, but the but Saturn is still dominant in the sky. They can still see it, and the sun is farther away. It's a distant star that's rising up in the east and setting in the west. And at that point, they begin, they get time, and they can tell time by the shadow of Saturn on the rings of water that have been squeezed out of the brown dwarf star as it was having those flare-ups. And um, so, one second. Okay, and so, at that point, they're saying that that was the, the moment that's talked about in the ancient mythos of mankind, the primordial darkness and the moment of light and creation and um, a golden age for humanity. And also, too, this gave birth to Venus, which was kind of squelched out of Saturn during that electrical interaction with the sun. During all that chaos, Venus was born, also known as Minerva and Artemis, Inanna, Ishtar, in many different cultures. And that uh, she, at that point, was... The, it was the birth of Aphrodite with Venus. And then, but Mars is also at that point um, interacting and is seen as like the star child, basically, of Saturn and Venus. And they are seen in the sky, not they're close, and they are very obvious to ancient primordial man. And they're still kind of at that, I mean, they're fixing to enter into a golden age that occurs after the deluge 6,000 years ago. One of the ages of man, the golden age, the silver age, the bronze age, and the iron age. And uh, so those, those are actually uh, four different ages of mankind, meaning that uh, it's not like you would expect from like anthropology in this, where they, they talk about the, uh, you know, the stone age and that sort of thing. These are completely separate uh, ideas uh, behind this idea with the uh, this uh, the Saturn death cult and this whole thing and so so the purple dawn it, it, it basically in, in the moments before the sun came uh, before the actual sun sort of a uh, uh, became part of the the heliocentric model that we know today of of our solar system the purple dawn was um, uh, well like the light itself was purple it's like the, everything sort of had a purple hue and all the plants were uh, sort of different everything was a little bit different because it had to uh, adapt to like the particular light that came from Saturn at the time right and then once this sun thank you Mike oh my God. What's that? What's that? I said thank you because the the gravity thing too about the large animals and the growth of the plants and that uh, you know those dinosaurs they think that the bulk of their bodies some of them could have been supported so they might have just been bobbing around in marshes but under this theory it's possible that they were lighter and they could support their own bodies and could grow to such extent you know such massive proportions. Exactly. That's a good point to mention. Yeah, and then so so the whole <laughs> yeah. idea here is this this purple dawn is this idea it's sort of pre world as we know it now and so everything was different uh, the whole photosynthesis as we know and green plants and all the rest of this didn't even exist yet it was everything was sort of in this primordial version of the of the earth and life and all the rest of that and people uh, people lived back then as well so it wasn't just dinosaur stuff you know how they, they we have those uh, tracks where you see like the dinosaur and like the the people footprints next to them kind of a uh, in stone you, you've seen that jan i'm sure <laughs> that that's some of the ideas that these guys yeah talk about. Uh- the yeah. massive and all that. Yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, and so so that I mean that and that's the thing, right? So so uh, there's the idea that uh, at at sort of the primordial beginning of the Earth itself, it, it was with uh, Saturn was the first sun, and so this is where this kind of comes into play. This whole idea of this Saturn worship, because it, it was cast aside, and so in in, in Greek and um, and uh, Roman mythology, of course, the Saturn Cronus, uh, Saturn is the two names, right? And you also have he was the king of the gods, all right? He was the father uh, married to Gaia, right? Which, of course, is, is Mother Earth, as you, as you know, in, in those terms. But uh, they had sons and, uh, and daughters. And, of course, uh, as we've heard in other mythologies and legends, the Oedipus complex, things like this, uh, it was uh, determined that these sons and daughters eventually would overthrow Cronus himself. And so he wouldn't allow that to happen, and he would actually eat his children as they were born. He would devour them, as they were said. And so this whole thing turns into this, uh, well, then this is where it starts to get a little dark, right? Because we're talking about actually eating children, <laughs> right? And so th- that's not an accident. It's not an accident that it traces back to that idea that uh, that Saturn itself was sort of displaced as the the center of the solar system, and not only that displaced by, wouldn't you know it, Jupiter of all of all things, and the, the sun itself, of course. But I don't know anything to add that we got like another minute or so before we got to take a break. But like I said, there's just so much here. There's so much to talk about regarding all of this, but. Uh, uh, but, but go ahead. What else you got, Jen? No, that tied up. I think, I think that tied up nicely as far as the best we can do to cover the cosmology. But people can look into it. It's a very deep topic on the cosmology. Very yeah, interesting. Exactly. Just that part itself, like again, from the Purple Dawn all the way through how, how the Saturn got displaced and kind of thrown out uh, again through, by Jupiter. We'll get to that as well when we come back, including that uh, you, you eat, uh, he was eating his children so they wouldn't overthrow him. But of course, uh, as, as, uh, as is done, the mother didn't like this, of course. It was, uh, it was uh, Gaia. She wrapped uh, one, is one child in particular, in a rock. Uh, sorry, in a swaddled a rock instead, gave it to Cronus, who who ate the rock, thinking, of course, it was Zeus, Jupiter, and it was not. And so uh, he, Zeus and uh, Zeus and or Jupiter, depending if you like the Greek or the Roman, actually was uh, was ushered away and grew to become a man. And what did he do? You know what he did? <laughs> he overthrew dad and he freed his siblings from the stomach of Saturn himself. And so that's what we're talking about tonight. The idea, again, that's the Greek and the uh, the um, uh, Roman mythology regarding this. But we're talking about the Saturn death cult tonight and how this began and how it's a still a pervasive thing even today in society and culture. And it's uh, sort of the slave system of how we've been uh, basically just corralled into this idea of, well, reality as we know it now we're here with jennifer a good friend of mine jennifer in missouri and we're uh, talking about this and of course we're taking your phone calls if you want to be part of the show tonight give us a call at 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 and we're going to take a quick break but we're going to continue talking about this because there's a lot so we're going to get to how this starts to become a well a sort of worldwide thing and continues again from the earliest days of mankind all the way to the current day and of course we're talking about the Saturn death cult. So if you want to be part of the show tonight, one more time, give us a call at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. We're here with Jennifer in Missouri. And of course, we're talking about the Saturn death cult. What do you know about this? Is this something that's new to you? Is this something you think tracks and makes a lot of sense? Do you think we're completely off the rails and it makes no sense whatsoever? Love to hear your thoughts on this and more. One more time, 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. Don't go anywhere. More Saturn Death Cults. Jennifer, Troubled Minds, and your calls when we return. Be right back. Transfer into your right. People 
Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and tonight we're here with my good friend, Jennifer in Missouri, and we'd like to say hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. What's going on, guys? It's Tuesday night, which is one of the nights we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. What are those things we can't talk about? Well, you know, aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle propaganda and the general feeling that we live in the upside down tonight we're talking about the idea of the, the saturn death cult how these there's a cosmology involved it seems to be pervasive with all ancient ideas of mythology and religion it all seems to be tied together it's this this whole thing is uh, it's so big that it literally is sort of a an alternative what would you describe way of just really really looking at the 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 dawn of humanity and basically uh how we got here how we're in this mess today that this goes way back and it's not just a uh, modern phenomenon of uh well you know epstein style stuff and uh the elites that are running the world with the one percent and the rest of that stuff it's see this seems to go incredibly deep and it uh, it is all traced back to this idea of the saturn death cult so if you want to be part of the show tonight of course we are doing this live as always the the secret weapon of troubled minds is you and you can give us a call at 702-957-1033 that's 702-957-1037 and we'll put you on the show and let's see what are we doing we're streaming on rockfin youtube d live and twitter we're broadcasting live on the fringe fm and uh we're here with jennifer and of course we'll get to james in just a moment uh jennifer welcome back so far so good hello yes i think it's going well good evening so far so good i agree Um, there's a lot here go right ahead go ahead so at that um after during that golden period, that golden age, what you have Saturn as like a there's a duality, like this very um this abundance stage because while still in the plasma sheath of Saturn, there was this perfect kind of tropical warmth except for at the at the Arctic poles. But the rest of and even at the very top of the pole, supposedly because there was supposedly an auroral shade, a cloud basically, up in the atmosphere of um, accumulated moisture cloud, and it was casting a shadow down onto the North Pole. But everywhere else, there was kind of like a tropical environment going on, and there was a time of plenty. So it wasn't like it was, there were no weather extremes, there was nothing like that, and there was just an abundance. However, whenever the plasma sheath is lifted and the sun takes full control of Earth, so to speak, At that point, we begin to experience seasons, and with that, scarcity. So then you kind of get into that area of control of resources and debt-backed slavery and why you would need slavery and why they would even do it to begin with, like, and who are the people doing it? And these are um, aligned to supposedly be the priest-king area. So, like, these, this is an, an era of priesthood um a priesthood of people who are holding the memory and the knowledge of that event and that that knowing about the truth of what happened 
exactly. and how they're going to control resources. Right. right, exactly. So this this t- leads into basically where we're at today. In in and this has been going on for many many thousands of years as well, right? With a, a sort of the priest ruling class and uh, you know uh, being able to do all the things they want with it, you know living living the lavish lifestyles and all the rest of this, while the rest of us useless eaters are exactly those tax slaves, those debt slaves, right? And so it, 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 it does link back to basically you can go back to any civilization in. And anthropology will back this up as well. As soon as they started creating these city states and all the rest of this, people started doing all all of the the things you would expect, right? Growing crops and whatever. This was the idea of resources. Of well, uh, we only have so much of this, so who gets it? You know who gets it? The rich people get it, <laughs> and then the the, uh, the poor people we got to buy it, right? The rich people get it automatically. The poor people just get to buy it, and if they have enough money to buy it with, right? Wink, wink. And so it turns into. Well, it turns into today. It turns into this big mess we're in. We'll get into more of this as we go tonight. If you want to be part of the show tonight, have questions for myself or Jennifer. We're talking about the Saturn, Saturn death cult. And is this a real thing? Is this just an idea, again, like I said, sort of a boogeyman to scare children to sleep at night? Or is this, uh, well, something uh, much more sinister than that? Love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And uh, we'll put you on the show. Easy as that. Just like this, matter of fact. Let's go to James in Michigan. Michigan. What's up, my friend? Welcome to Troubled Minds. Go right ahead. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, sir. Hello. How are you, James? I am good. I'm glad we got that in the first I... try this time. And hello, Jen. Indeed. Uh, it actually works. Uh, cross your fingers. We don't break anything from here to there. So so what do you yeah. think, James? Have you heard of this Saturn death cult? Is this new to you, or is this one of those ideas that you've heard for a, quite some time? No, this is new. Um Although, so there's two things that I think are interesting about this. First off is the idea of the electric universe, because I don't know the details, but that's a newer model some people have been proposing of how the universe works anyway, in current times, as well. Tesla. Okay, see that you know more about it than I do, and that, that at least in that point anyway. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting. That I, that goes all the way back. To, to, who who knows how far back, and yet it's supposedly a newer idea. I just think that's really interesting. Agreed. I've got a, a mm-hmm. link I just put up. It's on the screen as well. It's called uh, electricuniverse.info if you guys want to check it out and read more about this. This this idea right here all by itself is probably a whole show, so we can't spend a ton of time sure. on this. Yeah, so so I don't want to like get into the weeds with this, cause otherwise we'll never make it back to, to the Saturn death cult. So, <laughs> so uh, it is there. Uh, in, in, anything you want to add to that, to, to what James there said? I agree, James. This, this is a pretty fascinating thing, uh, the old St. Elmo's fire routine and uh, electricity and space and plasma and all this stuff it's uh it's pretty mind-blowing when you start uh, reading up on this and uh, check check out the link uh james you'll 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 enjoy it quite a lot but go ahead jen what's your thought on that you talk about it a lot like when you talked about the ufos and plasma blobs kind of thing and um tesla talks a great deal about it and was very critical of einstein's um version of the universe and he did propose something very similar to this electric universe paradigm. So I think that people should check out Tesla too. And what he had to say about it's very, it's, it's inspiring to think about. Free energy. Ah, gotta love that free energy. (laughs) Uh, Go Mm -hmm. ahead, James. What else you got, my friend? Yeah. So I just, um, again, like you said, that's definitely something for another day to go into all that. But, um, the other thing is just this idea. And I, um, about the planets being things other than planets is just really interesting. And also the idea of how they're connected to mythology makes me think of, and I think this is maybe I already mentioned, the idea that these planets have some kind of sentience and or stars have sentience. And if you, you know, just look at the, the stories like you were talking about earlier. I mean, if, if different... Um, in space, when you have things collide sometimes, you can have things like different planets or masses or whatever appear to eat other things. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, combine with other things so that it's almost like it's eating in a way. So I, I find that really interesting, that parallel there. 
Yeah, uh, p- planetary merging or black holes merging is a nice way of saying one whoop the other's ass. <laughs> but that, that's kind of what happened, right? That that's kind of how it goes. Some part of that is destroyed. You can't merge two things without waste, without destruction, without all the rest of that. But I, I like the way you put that. Is is uh so so in, in we talk about the Marvel universe quite a lot and how there's some of the weird cosmology stuff uh, that we not we're talking about tonight. Some of that, but also how sort of in the universe at large in IRL in the real world world is uh it, there's some some things that seem to match and in this case uh describing sentience and planets and destruction and things like that we got uh what's the guy's name galactus right yeah he goes and and he takes the energy basically out of all the worlds um and the reason he does it is to it's almost like a population control in a way um because mm. all these planets are used as basically eggs for these other aliens these um basically these massively powerful energy beings called celestials and that's how they basically they um reproduce as, as some way through a planet and to control their population um that's what what Galactus does is he goes around and does this to planets now of course Anything that's living on the planet is no consequence to him if it gets destroyed as he's destroying the planet because he's not there for everyone that's on that planet. So, um, again, that's, that just shows the very impersonal, I guess, impersonal nature of, of um, things that can happen, you know, in the larger scheme of things. Yeah, right. The like the old one percent that could give a damn. <laughs> they they got theirs, yeah. and the rest of us can just rot, and it's all it's all fine by them. Uh, amazing stuff. So so, what else you got for us, James? That was it. Just um, great show, great topic, and uh, I'm, I really uh, a lot of great great uh, information here. This is not at all what I had suspected when I when I saw the title. As far as that when I had no idea. So great great show. Well, it's going to get there. <laughs> this gets darker. The, 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 the longer we, we go here, this is going to get darker and darker. So, yeah, fantastic stuff. Th- thanks again for the phone call. James here has a podcast called Salcedo Paranormal. You can uh, find him. Link is in the description down below. By the way, Jennifer as well. Link, her link is in the description down below. She's got a YouTube channel. It's right there on top. Uh, please give them both a follow because uh, amazing people, good friends of mine. They're doing great work out there. And uh, always a pleasure, James. Thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, just a quick tip also, um, the thing also, uh, Jen was on my show last Friday, and the plan is to be on the show again this Friday, so um, yeah, looking forward to that as well. Nice. Me there too. We go. There we go. All right. Sweet. Anything for uh, for James, uh, Jen before he takes off? No, I'm just glad he called in. Uh, 100%. Thank you, 100%. James. Thanks, James. You're the best, bro. All right. So uh, we're you. still we're still doing this. We're talking about all kinds of crazy stuff like we do. It's just another Tuesday on Troubled Minds. Talking about the Saturn death cult, all right? We kind of got through uh, most of the cosmology here, and we're going to get into some of this darker stuff as it becomes basically like a control mechanism for basically all of humanity for all of time. And uh, sort of like it was maybe planned from the, the get-go, from the beginning of everything, which uh, seems even more sinister. Do you, uh, what are your thoughts on this if you have ideas if you've heard of this the saturn death cult uh, how how deep does this go and do you think this is real or not love to hear your thoughts on any of that 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 we're here with jennifer in missouri tonight and we're talking about crazy stuff per usual saturn death cult let's go to uh derek massachusetts the night stalker welcome to troubled minds my friend you're on with uh jen and mike how you doing hey mike hey jen what's going on you guys great show tonight thank you hello uh, uh, if you can hear any like background noise, just tell me to stop, and I'll uh, try to run outside or something. I'm, You're good. I'm calling sounds, from the aisle right now. Sounds fine. Go right ahead. All right. Um, great show. Great stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of go a little bit like uh, darker with it, or weirder, or more like more literal and less like. Um, uh, it, they all could apply to this electric universe thing, but I just love the idea of like the Lovecraftian old ones and the Titans too much. So just to just to to lose the the more literal. Um, analogy for it kind of so but first as far as like the the death cult aspect of it and the way that like death is kind of like um popular been popularized amongst like the culture itself uh, we, I, I i think you're right on the money with that and i think like that's it has kind of direct tie-ins to saturn himself like on the past like couple super bowls we had at uh, the weekend 
two years ago, and his like entire aesthetic, his like entire theme is uh, Memento Mori, which is basically like uh, like die, like don't worry about life, like like, like death, death is more important, like 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 live fast and leave a pretty corpse, basically, and like take drugs and do all that kind of stuff. So that's really like permeating through celebrity culture massively, um, especially like hip hop music and stuff. And then also like Travis Scott, he loves Saturn. He has like Saturn stuff all over his. Uh, his all his marketing things, his his like astro world thing was basically like outer space kind of, and he has like he had like Saturn rings and everything on the on the posters and stuff. And then the actual event itself had like a giant Travis Scott head at the at the center of the uh, or at the entrance to Astro World. So then everybody like everybody who walks into the event, and the people who were like tragically killed, walks through basically Kronos's mouth, like Kronos who like eats his children and stuff. So like Kronos is Saturn, and I like love. The like they're they're actively working towards something, and in my opinion, it's to it's to it's to resurrect these these Lovecraftian old ones or or Titans as I call them. And Kronos, Saturn is the king of the Titans. I think there's a collective that essentially believes that there's a pantheon of older gods led by this great horn god or this great Kronos, this great eater of children or whatever, like the, the, with his great scythe, like killing everybody. They want him back, so they have to. In order to do that, they have to bust him out of Tartarus, um, and basically like collapse the pillars of reality to to do that. And that's all the rituals on these like sacred spots and everything is to actually collapse the pillars of reality to bring back a literal giant monster. Um, and I think that's absolutely like all over media, like to a to a ridiculous extent. I'm not I'm not gonna like, list off all of them, um, but it's all it's absolutely everywhere, you know. Kids, kids programming, adult programming, sci-fi, everything, you know. Sorry, I'm rambling. Go on. You're good. You're good. Anything there, Jen? Um, yes, I think he's absolutely right. I mean, the horned god thing is the shadow of Saturn on its own rings creating a horn. And all that symbology, you typically see a globe inside of a set of horns and almost all of the symbology of it. And I think it definitely is representative representative of saturn and chronos definitely is saturn i think and also too and this is not my belief system by the way but anyway and also too that um i think that they are trying like you said to possibly resurrect the old ones and to realize themselves as immortal and yeah. become like them yeah. so they are no longer under the suffrage of the whims of those primordial old ones so i think you're right yeah it's like it's multifaceted there's like weird there's weird different narratives that kind of tied to like tied to saturn and some some are like cults that are designed in like veneration of saturn or of chronos or of this black cube or yada yada and some seem to be almost like an opposing force like they like what if saturn is like david Icke and stuff he talks about i mean take take his stuff with a with a very large grain of salt obviously but like his one of his major um, major theories is that the the hexagon on Saturn is like what's in charge is like what's actually creating time is like what's actually controlling whatever prison mechanism whatever prison planet mechanism we're actually in so that like there's a there's a collective of, of elites or whatever that are trying to like it's almost like we're in Tartarus to an extent and they're trying to like bust us out of this time prison that we're in and then another group they they worship um, whatever these archons or whatever these overlords that would have established this this mechanism, this Saturn Saturn prison matrix system. And, you know, if, I mean that's a obviously pretty ridiculous thing, and I don't know if I believe that. But the hexagon on Saturn is is weird, and like and all the black cube stuff is really really weird. And so it's like like we've talked a lot about the idea of like where gods come from, and like. Um, the belief in gods is actually what kind of powers them. So, like, what if there was an actual Saturn as our sun, like an actual cosmology, an actual event that happened? And then throughout the generations, throughout the last 60,000 years or millions of years or however long, the story has got interpreted as, like, an actual king of the gods who was overthrown and buried in, in, in the earth or buried in a metaphysical prison. But because of countless, like, generations of belief in that, it's actually created... Um, a giant monster that they're trying to release. So they could both be happening at the same time. Like, 
an actual like Saturn was once our sun, and there was a, the electric universe collapse and all that kind of stuff. But then also, there's a giant monster that they're trying to resurrect. You know, and somebody <laughs> in the chat mentioned the, like, the, the Phoenix thing, and that's another like rabbit hole too. But that's exactly right. Like, there's a lot of Phoenix stuff, a lot of resurrection of the Titans, like symbology and in media uh, to a crazy extent. Like, I can't, I can't stress enough how how prevalent it is. It's absolutely everywhere. But, yeah, it's it's also interesting to note that we haven't mentioned it yet, but the the, the idea that uh, Saturn was the first son of the Earth, uh, that that in that brown dwarf status and was above the Earth, right, literally above the North Pole and kind of locked in that state, and so uh, it also kind of traces back to like you said, the symbology is everywhere. The Eye of Providence, right? You guys have all seen that on the back of the dollar bill. Yeah. There's like the the all seeing eye. It's like the, the top of the pyramid that's looking down, and and that goes back to exactly this idea of Saturn sort of overlooking. The Earth, that all see and I, sort of like the eye of, eye of Sauron, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, just, it's, it's, we're running out of time, so I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up. But like, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot in the mix, and just like the the it's it's weird. It's tough to like kind of reconcile like why why the cosmology collapse would then like. What do you think, Jennifer? Like, I, I I had to uh, take a, I had to talk to my boss for a little bit, so I might have missed you talking about it. But like, why why would the collapse of an actual cosmology make an elite class do like rituals like what's the goal of the elites in in these blood sacrifices that they're doing what's this eyes wide shut stuff like why what are they doing are they trying to bring a literal saturn back do they think it's like going to like what are they what's what's their angle with it you know um i'll let you go but uh, really really awesome stuff tonight great stuff jennifer great stuff mike um i'll, I'll take off Bye. appreciate really it good. Okay. appreciate Thanks. it Thank you very much. That's Derek in Massachusetts, Knights, the Night Stalker. Uh, give him give him some love as well. Uh, links in the description. He's got a YouTube channel. Go ahead, Jennifer. He had a question for you. Yes. I think that they are, I think it initially started out as a retelling of the events that happened at a, on a cosmic level. And then I think over time, it became more and more extreme to limit those who would be initiated into this knowledge they began to reenact what they saw symbolic, like symbolically of the consuming of, you know, the sacrifices and things of, uh, and doing these kinds of sex rituals and things like that. And I think that they became more and more extreme as they began to believe that it was communicating with the cosmic forces by by committing these acts, when they start doing huge rituals involving mass uh, death, mass kill-off, as in the case of wars and things like that, and they have the entire population of the planet, the planet interacting in the rituals, they believe that they themselves are somehow going to control their own incarnation. Which is where we're going to get to here after the break. I appreciate it, Jennifer. Uh, good stuff, as always. Uh, we're yeah. still talking about this. We're doing this. The Saturn Death Cult. Have you heard of this? What do you know about this? Could this be real? Could this be not? 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. We're here with my good friend Jennifer in Missouri. We're still talking about the Saturn Death Cult. Don't go anywhere. More after the break. Be right back. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. We're here tonight with Jennifer in Missouri, and we are talking about Saturn Death Cult. That's right. Do you want to be part of the show tonight? Have you heard of this? Do you know what this is about? Is Are we blowing up your brains? Is this like too much a woo for you? Where do you stand? Is this... Well, the idea is that there's a sort of a pervasive idea of a death culture that's not only maybe harvesting people, sacrificing lives, and uh, of course, uh, controlling the population through debt slavery. Well, do you think this sounds legit? Or do you, does it track? Does it not track? Uh, and this goes back. This goes back quite a ways, and that's what we're doing tonight. And considering all the things, you know Troubled Minds, where uh, we call call this drink in the maybe juice, which means getting together and just considering the idea that something might be true, and uh, that the, the old Aristotle quote, it is the mark of an educated mind to consider something without accepting 
accepting the idea. And so that's what we do. That's what we call drinking the maybe juice here. And the idea tonight is exactly that, the death culture, the Saturn death cult. Let's uh, welcome back Jennifer, and we got some phone calls to get to as well. Jennifer, what's going on? My dogs are howling at the coyotes, so I don't know if you are. They're like freaking out. Can you hear them? Can't even hear them. You're good. You're good. You need to check on it. Are you okay? If you need to step <laughs> no, away, they're it's... fine. They're inside. Just okay. Okay. Freaking out down. Okay. If you do need but, um, to step away, it's no sweat. Thing, I think it's okay. Okay. All right. Go right ahead. Okay. So the the culture aspect of the death cult, the Saturn death cult. Let's talk about how the priesthood knows this ancient history and they have been controlling history for a long time they there's occult symbology behind all of it the rituals of all the wars and everything are done on certain dates every people who may look into that will find that that there's a significance to cosmological alignments and certain times of the day and numbers and there's a lot of that going on in the symbology aspect And we have to wonder about um, the way that they are controlling culture and driving events and defining the truth for society. Like when you think about how the validity of when an event takes place and when you look at the news cycles and the headlines that you talk about a lot of times too, and deciding what's important and what's inconsequential, they do, by doing that, they... um, use events that they have possibly perpetrated or have drawn attention to to manipulate our perception of what has happened and to define to us what is fact and what is not and eventually defining what is the truth and all of this is some kind of a propaganda backed by a, the uh, about by opinions of the people they put in front of us like celebrities and the newscasts and the pundits and all of that. And they use certain events like 9-11 or like, um, well, any major event, um, even the Holocaust, they say was actually just a prototype for the depopulation agenda of the future. And so the way that they've defined all of this, what was once done by, um, you know, the, uh, anyway, so that now, basically, history is being shaped by this cult and is driving the future towards a certain, in a certain direction. Which, uh, which, right, a lot of this does track for me, too. Like I said, if you look at, uh, you know, don't get, I always say, don't get me started on taxes and health care. But those two things, right, like are literally, we're talking about debt slaves is taxes and health care is like, a, you know, just this morbid, like kind of grotesque way of just telling you, well, sorry, we can't help you because you're not, you know, you're not part of the right class or whatever. And, it, you know, just just like those two things, you can kind of say in terms of that, like the, they do trigger me quite a bit, but it, it, it seems to fit into this idea that we're talking about tonight, not just like the, the maybe sacrifices in terms of war, in terms of, right, whatever this happens to be, but uh, everything else as well, kind of a funneled into this uh, this just slavery system that we live in and that's really what this is all about uh, love to hear you guys thoughts on this one more time 702-957-1037 let's go to uh looks like this is tim no no yeah i'm not sure who this is uh welcome to troubled minds what's your first name where are you calling from tim hey what's up man i'm out in palm springs california tim in california what's happening welcome to troubled minds you're on with mike and jennifer go right ahead have you heard of this uh saturn death cult before uh, no, not particularly the Saturn death cult, but um, it rings true to me to that all conspiracies, they're not conspiracies, it's truth, and all all roads lead to Rome kind of thing, like they're all intertwined, All every, every conspiracy theory that all the truthers of, out here are trying to track down. They all lead to like the one branch, and Saturn Death Cult, I guess, is pretty much one of the main branches of them. I would say that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's it does seem like uh, this is kind of the you know uh, oddly enough, right? I'm going to put it in this term: is that uh, they say that uh, Saturn is known as Lord of the Rings, and so we can probably call this uh, the the one 
conspiracy to rule them all. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> it certainly seems like it, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, all, all truthers, we have to unite. None of what we say is... I can't believe how... How I just can't believe how how blind we are all as a society. I really can't believe it. It's really mind blowing when you just take a deep breath and look around and be like, man, we are really all that blind. Yeah. There's a lot going on. I appreciate, I appreciate what you do, man. I love you, Mike. You're, you do it really well. You ramble and ramble on sometimes, but man, that's all right. (laughs) That's right. I'm the you rambling are man. A really cool dude, man. <laughs> I appreciate You're that. You're helping a lot of people out there. I appreciate and that. If thing. you ever say hi to Beachwood, just I hope tell Beach, um, tell him I hope he's doing okay. We'll do. We'll do. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the phone call. That's uh, that's Tim in California. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks, Mike. Have a great night. Thanks for the call. Uh, take on that there. Uh, what, what about that, Jennifer? That uh, the idea that this is this is the conspiracy to rule them all, isn't it? It certainly seems like it. Well, it's because it's it's covering such a it's yes, you know. And and what he was saying about all roads leading to Rome, you know, it's said that that was the beginning of the Iron Age that we're in right now where was a taking going on, a, a kind of a quickening occurring, and that it was an extension of Mystery Babylon, which was a uh, type of, com- like a commerce, sort of, a way of handling usury and money and control, and the extension of, uh, and the use of war to really kind of cinch things down. And what's interesting, what he was saying, too, um, you know, it's true that the way that we're manipulated, it, when you think about war itself and the purge that a war is, everybody knows that killing is wrong, but we've been convinced through all kinds of diversities that doing it on a grand scale is sometimes okay, <laughs> and that it's okay to even die in the course of it. And But I do think, I, I do want to say one thing that I think there's an optimist, there's, there's kind of a silver lining, um, because people are they've kind of because of their i don't know if they underestimated or what but everyone a lot of people are waking up to this symbology and i think most people recognize it and as long as that is the case then there's always something to oppose it which which is uh which which brings brings that to us <laughs> somebody needs to speak up right somebody somebody needs to say hey like something is not right here and literally this is sort of like the intro to, to the show's top of the hour we always talk about living in the upside down and this this is exactly sort of the epitome of that this whole idea of the this death cult in terms of like you said uh, it's not like a like a night stalker was describing it, is it, it's better to you know live fast die young leave a pretty corpse and uh it, it, but it's like wait you know like w- what about the rest? Like, it's not about like, there's, there's so much richness to life in all, all aspects of life, being young, being old, being yeah. in between. Right. And so, but by, by kind of being so quick to, to get to the death point, uh, well, what are we doing? It seems like it is like some sort of sick, uh, herding cattle off the cliff. You know what I mean? Except in this case, uh, uh they're not cattle at all, which is even more unfortunate. eh? Yes. Yes. And I, I think that they want to, it's for, it's a, The elitism is believing that a certain group of people are more deserving of life in general than others. And so that they hope to um, eventually that whole Georgia Guidestone thing and all of that is kind of the idea because of the resources being so scarce. They want to reinvent the idea of this golden age of plenty for themselves and immortality and the whole shebang of it, basically the transhumanism and the right becoming gods themselves, gods and goddesses themselves. So, yeah. Pretty wild stuff. But Pretty wild stuff. Go ahead, go ahead. But, they, but still using us as like a, uh, still replicating that Saturn relationship. So they still have that symbology of the blood rituals and the slaves and that kind of thing going on in the background the whole while. It's really dark. <laughs> but anyway. 
It is. It is super it dark. Is. It is super dark. And, and that's what we're talking about tonight, this idea of the Saturn death cult. And again, so cult is really short for culture here. It's uh, less, less cult, more culture. And so the question becomes, right, is this possible that there's this really sort of dark underlying current of control that's happening with our society, with this idea of really venerating death more than anything else and chasing it, uh, live fast, die young, leave a nice corpse sort of situation. And uh, like Jennifer just said, the whole like bringing about the golden age again, but not for us, for them, for the elites, for the priest class. And and again, uh, I'm glad you brought up the transhumanism bit as well, because when you think of it in terms of uh, talking about the priest class, the new priest class is like the technocratic class, right? It's like a, it's like the individuals that are um, not just. Uh, those unelected officials is what the, the, the term technocrat actually means, uh, you know, like powerful unelected people, but then also in terms of uh, this new digital age. And so we're kind of throwing away religion for this idea that we worship this technology, this technological terror, right? As a uh, Darth Vader might say, that's becoming well dark. It's becoming just a really dark place. So you look at Instagram and the suicides of young women, right? And nobody gives a damn because we're making money, right? Hey, Facebook's making money. We could give a damn about any of that, right? How many lives does it take uh, for how many dollars, right? So it's a, uh, it becomes like just a, like I always talk about this, the cold spreadsheet of like the academic, you know, well, if we make these decisions, we do the best by these people and only this many people die, right? It's like, hey, to me, why don't we not have people die? Like, like, wh- why is this a thing? Why do we have to try, try and uh, draw lines in the sand and leave certain classes or groups of people out or in the rain or, you know, just left, left to die in the cold, hungry or whatever? It's a... It makes me mad. This whole thing really makes me mad. And uh, this this is why we talk about this stuff. So uh, we're looking to hear from you guys tonight. What do you think about this idea of the Saturn death cult? We're here with Jennifer in Missouri. Please give her some love. Uh, Check out uh, her YouTube channel. Link is in the description down below. Uh, Let's go to Daryl in New York. Welcome to Troubled Minds. You're on with uh, Mike and Jen. How are you, Daryl? Hi, guys. What a great topic. It's um, very, very dark, um, but it's very interesting. Um, I have two things to mention. Um, one was about what James had said about how did they get the planets to move? You know, what, what's up with that? And I was thinking, you know, with the 5G technology, all these satellites, apparently the Earth's orbit is slowing down. I wonder if that's like the big goal. You know, do they have a planet at standby to jump onto? Do they have a spaceship to stand on? Is that big monster mm-hmm. that they're going to summon going to put them on his back and take them off to a better planet? I don't know. Or is he going to, you know, are they going to fly Earth to another solar system? What the hell is that all about? Anyway, that's just baby juice. But I was reading today um, an excerpt from Charles Schwab's book. Can I read you just a little bit of what he said? Sure, go right ahead. At least four billion useless eaters shall be eliminated by the year 2050 by means of limited wars, organized epidemics of fatal rapid-acting diseases and starvation. Energy, food, water, um, and water shall be kept at subsistence levels for the non-elite, starting with the white populations of Western Europe and North America, and then spreading to other races. The populations of Canada, Western Europe, and the United States will be decimated more rapidly than on other continents until the world's population reaches a manageable level of 1 billion, of which 500 million will consist of Chinese and Japanese races, selected because they are people who have been regimented for centuries and who are accustomed to obeying authority without question. Nice, huh? That's and from dark. time to time, they'll be, yeah, they'll be artificially um, contrived. Yeah, food and and I mean, can you believe this has been, he wrote this book? With this in it, is this a work of fiction? What the hell was this book about? Is it an autobiography? <laughs> what's I mean, a, what's the book called, Daryl? What's it called again? I don't know what the I don't know what the name of the book is. I know that Charles uh, Klaus, I'm sorry, Klaus Schwab um, wrote it. Oh, the, the book world, Klaus Schwab. world economic forum. Yes, 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 right. yes. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. So, I mean, that's called world economic forum. And rose by any other name would stink as bad. I don't know. It all yeah. stinks to me. Agreed, 100%. Uh, you were going to say something there, Jennifer. We cut you off. Go right ahead. Oh, I do think that they are ho- like that they're hoping or they can. There's the idea that they've been diverting funds, that there's the space program, and then there's this, this secret space program where all the money actually is going like from all of this 
this whole power mechanism thing, this whole control paradigm, that the money and the power and all that's been used to try to create a off-planet type Elysium sort of idea, like a sort of idea that because the Earth will become so overpopulated and resources will become so scarce that they intend to go somewhere else or to possibly just launch themselves out into space is what some people have speculated. I don't know, but that they want to not be just mere human animals, but become like the gods themselves, free to roam, you know, the cosmos, so to speak, or to go wherever they please and do as they please. Mm. To transcend being just a human animal, to reach immortality, and to be invulnerable. And that maybe these funds and all of these, uh, this, these tech, you know, the, the, the medical field and all these advancements are hmm. to reach that in some way. And so it is possible, like you were saying, I don't know about, um, but we do see that they have an awful lot of interest. A lot of hmm. people have a lot of clout, do seem to have a lot of interest in interstellar travel. As far as the, uh, but yeah, so that, that was it that I was thinking. Crazy agendas, I don't know. I guess when you're rich and have that much money, you have all this time to think this stuff up, you know? <laughs> I think we have to get them a job, you know? Yeah, their, 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 their job is uh, <laughs> subjugating us. That's their job, Daryl. <laughs> right, I know, I know. Yeah. Too much time on their hands. Yeah, absolutely know. horrific. Uh, so right. have you have you actually heard of this idea of the Saturn death cult? Is this a new concept to you, or is this uh, something you're familiar with? I don't know. You know, I don't know. Jordan Maxwell has talked about Saturn a lot. Um, I don't know. If you ever listened to him, I mean, he had a visitor from another planet that he thought it was God. I don't know. Who, I don't know. He's a whole different aspect of this. But I, I've heard some some things about it, not as specific as Jennifer's gotten tonight, which I love. I love what she's uh, discussing, the concept of it. I, you know, I, it looks like something similar is going on. Maybe something always has been going on with that that kind of agenda. I just want to know how they keep surviving all these, uh, you know, apocalyptic type of events, you know, and do they keep creating them so that they can keep controlling the earth and the people? And why don't they get themselves elected? I mean, how did they how did they let democracy take over? But what were they kings before? Did they their monarchies run out? Did they run out of money? I don't know. What the hell? You know, how do they maintain this kind of lifestyle <laughs> throughout the, you know, centuries, etc.? You know, I, I'm Those assuming. That, she's right. You know, like, it is really, well, you have to wonder, like, how do they have so much power? But it's because they have, uh, when you, in, when you control the value of weights and measures was pointed out. Right. When you're controlling that, and the priest class was deciding that in the original um of civil when civilization was really getting off the ground with cities and commerce and trade mm -hmm. you know once the lights came on so to speak when they could, when the sun took over they began to trade widely in the invention of gold and then the gold-backed dollar and they were yeah. able to travel and trade more widely than they could before with just bushels of wheat you know, and things like that. So it goes back into the whole thing about the money mm -hmm. and the creation of worshiping money and that idea. And when they did that, then they really, that's, that's, that's really the control mechanism is through well. the money and the musery and yes, and the, right. the creation of debt. Uh-huh. Okay. But I mean, I'm sure this has like been hit or miss every, you know, every, 2,500 years is it, or every, I don't know how many times they have done a reset, you know, I mean, assuming that these resets are done on purpose, maybe they're not necessarily natural, you know, where, where you know, there's very few survivors, I don't know, I just think it's, I don't know, it sounds like it's part of that plan or that agenda, maybe, you know, but they're constantly re, re, uh, remaking the earth, you know, and starting over and you know, technology just gets one more step ahead of themselves than the last time, and they don't remember anything. How come they don't remember the last time? It's all that, those questions, you know? I'm assuming that, you know... I muted myself. History, <laughs> history being, you know, repetitive and redundant, etc. 
you know, and how have they survived? Have they gone underground? Was that why all those underground places were made for the elites? You know, are they doing it now? I think we think they are, you know, making bunkers that are, you know, whatever proof. Exactly. Some people say that they are aware of the time frame, so that's why they're so focused on watching the stars and the cosmological right. signs that they're so they are aware if there should ever be another traumatic right. cosmic cataclysm event of some kind. And some people speculate that even the the pyramids themselves, the way that they're designed, would sustain would be able right. to sustain um some you know, in the case of an event like this. However, yeah. I mean, because they're very, it's a doomy, dark type of mythos where they believe that they're, that this will happen again somehow. Yeah. And it's all about, uh, you know, how they're going to rise above it or not be affected by it should it happen again. And yeah. that kind of thing. Definitely. Hey, Daryl, we're out of time. Uh, you're welcome to stay right there. I appreciate you calling. Okay, thanks, for, thanks for being part of this. Yeah, Stay right there. You're mute up, and uh, you're, you're welcome to chime in a little bit later. That's Daryl in New York. She's got a YouTube channel. Give her some love as well. Scroll down. It says, follow Daryl here. She sings in uh, French and English, and uh, good friend of mine, good friend of the show. So thank you very much, Daryl. Appreciate that. So we're at the end of this. We're, we're uh, two hours. The time flies when you're having fun, which means that we got to get off the fringe here. But uh, as you know, this this continues. We're not uh, we're not done yet. As uh, as we continue talking about this, we're here with Jennifer in Missouri. And please, again, uh, please give her YouTube channel a follow. She's got got some got some amazing stuff there, and uh, a bright future ahead of her if she sticks with it. So let's inspire her to make some more videos and give her a follow. Uh, special thanks to Jennifer, Jennifer in Missouri. Thank you so much for uh, having this idea. Thanks for peeling out some time to come spend it with us. I appreciate it very much. Uh, anything you want to add to the audience as we kick it out and get out of here? No, thank you, Mike. Yes, it's. I think you know if people would look into uh, there's the the key lines like Electric Universe will tie into it, and there's a lot of people, David Talbot, who go into this. You're good. You can keep going. I just wanted to hear the music. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. All right. So uh, we're here with Jennifer again. Please uh, follow her YouTube channel. As you guys know, this is how this goes. Uh, a couple hours on Fringe FM. And uh, we. Uh, if you're listening to us on the Fringe, stay tuned for Joe Roop lighting the void. If you're listening to us on any other platform, including the podcast feed, stay tuned for a third hour of Troubled Minds. We're going to keep talking about this considering the Saturn death cult. How real is this? And that's what's up. So as we finish, it goes exactly like this. Be sure... Be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. And thank you very much to Jennifer here. Damn, down to the second. Sometimes you're good. When you're good, you're good. <laughs> we are off the Fringe FM. What's going on, guys? We're still doing this. We're going to keep talking about this. We're here with Jennifer in Missouri. We're still taking your phone calls as we consider the idea of the Saturn death cult. The death cult meaning more death culture, meaning more uh, pervasive perversion of humanity. What do you think? Is this new to you? Is this uh, an interesting idea? Do you think this is too far off the rails for you? You let me know. Uh, as always, we're taking all ideas here, and I'd love to hear it. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Got a couple guys on the, the phone line here. We got uh, Juan Carlos, and we got Joe in Florida. We're going to go to them in just a minute. Stay tuned. Two-minute break. More Trouble Minds on the way. Go ahead and uh, put the kids to bed. Top off your drink. Grab a snack. Hit the restroom. Do what you got to do. Two minutes. More Trouble Minds on the way. Be right back don't go anywhere i see you guys on the phone hang tight be right back
All right, two minutes-ish, good enough for me. Uh, let's do it. Let's get back to this. Let me kill this music, and uh, let's roll. Uh, 702-957-1037. I'm Troubled Minds. This is Michael Strange. We're here with Jennifer in Missouri, and we're talking about the Saturn death cult, this idea that uh, there's a pervasive cultural thing that's been going on since basically the dawn of humanity, where uh, wherein we're being sort of ushered into this uh, idea to embrace death instead of, instead of the opposite, instead of literally all the good things that humanity could be looking forward to instead uh, the the cultural bias is of course pressing us uh, to more and more morbid things including well sacrifice through war sacrifice through ritual and unfortunately back to the idea of Cronus uh, eating his children uh, even some of that so uh, very 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 dark stuff the more you look into this and the more it kind of uh, goes down that rabbit hole but love to hear your thoughts on this uh, 702-957-1037 Jennifer are you there If not, let's go to, uh, she might have stepped away for a second. Let's go to uh, Juan Carlos in California. It's been a very long time, my friend. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. How are you? Hey, Mike. Uh, good to talk to, talking to you. And um, I've been meaning to call. I just haven't, um, actually, I'm always on the road or coming from work or things like that. But good to have uh, another look, time in my two cents with you guys. Right on. Appreciate it. Uh, that's okay. You're, you're allowed to not call. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it is good to hear from you. It has been uh, at least a year, man, maybe pre-COVID almost. It's been a long time. So, so welcome back. What, what, do you, what do you think about this idea with, um, w- with the Saturn death cult? Have you heard of this before? Do you think this is an actual thing? Uh, what's your thought here? Well, um, well I, I went down the rabbit hole a long time ago. And, I mean, basically the... The truth is is uh, scarier than the fiction. If you go down that hole, you'll see how evil, how negative, how this whole world, what it really is. And like you guys have been talking about, you know, the elite, they don't want us knowing the powers of the universe. Like you guys said, free energy. And, um, I mean, this goes back to Inquisi- the Inquisition days, days back even further, where these elites, you know, they're, they're, their objective is to destroy burn anything that has to do with knowing the secrets of the universe you know um like if you if you understand energy it's it's all around us you know um for them i would think it's something of for preparing for when their death comes so they could benefit from it in this world and the next one and i mean we know of those two i mean the world we're living now and the spiritual one and i mean who knows there's more dimensions, you know, who knows after that dimension, the spiritual realm from then, you know, we could go move on somewhere else. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Cause if you go down that rabbit hole, you'll see a lot of these things that you guys are talking about are very true. I mean, they're very, they're very like, these people are very connected to the negative energy. Um, rituals with these beings of, of that negative energy, they feed off of that. And, um, the planets alone each produce each energy as well. I mean, it all makes sense. I think that's why they're very connected to one another because, I mean, even just when people are born, depending on the planets or however they were aligned in that time that you were born, they they influence, um, I guess, the being that you're going to be, you know. Um, I guess that's why horoscopes are very accurate. A lot of people... um born in certain times tend to act certain ways because of the energy that I guess feed off of or go t- towards us or may I have for, for one thing, you, you might even say that all these energies from the world is what makes you, um, uh, what else? I don't know if you want to input something because I could keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I, I like the idea that uh, so, sort of the the idea that this is written in the stars, right? Like, and and I'm not sure sure that um, you know predeterminism is the, is the term here, but that s- sometimes there are cosmic forces at work that uh, we we cannot really overcome, right? As just being people, as you know, kind of being locked into these tidal moon cycles. It's like things are things are as they are, and you know we've come to adapt to them, but but it may not even be the most ideal thing for people at all. Uh, so I do like the idea you're talking about there in terms of like maybe astrology and being born under a sign or things like this, right? I don't know. Like, I'm not sure if I totally believe that, but it's also pretty hard to discount it entirely. I'll give it that for sure. Uh, what else you got on your mind tonight, my friend? Uh, 
besides that, I mean, it's just very, it all goes together as how they want, the elites want everybody pretty much dumbed down and basically able to to make us believe or whatever they say is true. Like, they don't want nobody having, a, I guess you, I was going to say your decals to fire your pineal gland, but, you know, there's a lot of things that people don't believe that play a part towards the things that 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 are fed to us uh what we see on tv everything is just that low negative energy and that energy is you know as long as they keep us in that in that in that state we're never going to have a awakening to where we want to learn learn about these things it's, it's i know i'm not the only one i know there's millions of other people that Deep down inside, you know, there's there's a, a bigger purpose. It's not just a work nine to five and you die. Maybe you work enough to get a house, pay it off, and then, you know, life sucks. And I know there's more to it. And I know from going down the rabbit hole, seeing how much things that are actually hidden from us, the real truth, truth of what our, really, our history is. And even yet then, you, you, you're still going another rabbit hole because all these things have been changed over time that at the end of the day, it's pretty hard to actually, you find something truthful, but there's a lot of mixed up with lies and twisted up just so people are naive, not knowing about the real powers of the stars, the energy. There's, there's a lot of things. And, um, uh, what else what I was going to say? I think that's it. I'm just getting, I'm getting sidetracked. I have always a lot of things I want to say. And then once I get on the phone, it's just like completely almost blank out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my life. Welcome to my life. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is going to be so good. And then I spent three hours screwing it all up. <laughs> oh, well, oh, it, it happens, bro. It's part of being human. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, you, you, were, you were spot on with your thoughts. Uh, in my opinion, I, I don't think you messed up at all. Uh, I appreciate your phone call. Again, like I said, it's been a long time. Uh, Juan Carlos here has been a, a friend of the show, a friend of mine for a very, very, very long time, literally years at this point. He used to listen to us back when uh, nobody was listening to us. It's like uh, we we got these these amazing friends that have been around for a very very long time and uh, uh, thank you thank you for sticking with us thanks for being you bro I'm glad to hear you're well it's uh it's one of those things where kind of people drop off and don't call or you know you you wonder if they're listening hope they're well you know what I mean so so thank you for checking in thanks for sharing your thoughts tonight I appreciate it a lot cool thanks you guys thanks for having me on and um, maybe some other time I'll I'll get on the show and uh, kind of give you a little rundown of what I've been what other rabbit hole I've been going through because I mean it doesn't stop I like I love you guys' show and if I haven't called in uh, mo- most of my other time I was occupied either work or or um, I'll tell you guys later but it's a lot of things that kind of correlate to everything that's going on in this world and it's just sometimes you get overwhelmed of all the going down the rabbit hole and seeing the truth of this world for what it really is. Kind of want to sometimes take a break and find something that maybe is going to put you at a better position to change this world. At least that's where what I'm trying, what I've been doing. And hopefully maybe I could talk to you guys about this and uh, you guys, I'm pretty sure you guys would be uh, pretty, it would be pretty interesting to talk about all these things that are going on. It correlates to a lot of things that are going on in the world. You got it, bro. You're welcome. Anytime you know where to find us. Sorry, brother. Take care. You guys have a great night. Thanks a lot. You too. Appreciate that very much. That's Juan Carlos in California. Like I said, been listening to us for literally years, years. He used to call in almost every night to the show. Uh, glad to hear he's doing okay. Uh, Jen, are you there? Test one, two? Yep. Welcome yep, back. Right here. Welcome back to Troubled Mind. Yes. What's going on? <laughs> How you feeling? Good. I feel good. Yeah. Uh, what he was saying, I think it. I think for a lot of people, it's it's hard to believe that, you know, there could be mass sacrifices and occult murders and there could be agendas behind you know everything in the news and the media and all the events and uh, that there could be a you know it sounds insane because it is because they are <laughs> and then like and i think that you know but we have so much evidence i mean at this point it feels like uh, that there's something amiss i mean you have the historical references to the sacrifices with the Baal, Amon, you know, the all of these Phoenician, like all of the ancient sacrificial, and even in the everywhere around the world, like the you know, world over, the whole world seemed to be consumed with it at some point or another. But what he was saying about the cosmic forces and everything, you know, they do seem to believe that you can manipulate. And I think through these rituals, they think that they are manipulating, 
you know, spiritual and cosmic forces and the belief that you can control outcomes of, you know, your your future birth. Like they may be- believe, it seems that they do, that they are ensuring that they will be born again in these elite families that control the world if they do these rituals. Which and that there's is, power through these. So they, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, cosmic and spiritual power. It's, 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 it, again, it's a lot. It's, uh, like I said, the, the more I kept going down this rabbit hole, we're reading a few hours on this this afternoon, I was like, whoa, like this is deep stuff because it is, it is sort of yeah. that idea that it is all, 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 all uh, uh, pervasive. It, it's everywhere. L- literally ubiquitous saturn death cult and we can't shake it it's 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 part of who we are at this point because it's 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 been been such a ritualistic thing for so long we've been we, we, initiated we, we, into exactly, it exactly exactly that's the best way to put it we've been initiated into it uh so we're we're still talking about this tonight the saturn death cult uh, how real is this do you guys uh, have you heard of this do you believe this have we been initiated into this cult and is there a sinister force or idea that's really uh ubiquitous and pushing humanity to the brink of well breaking uh thanks for waiting joe let's go to joe in florida welcome to troubled minds you're on with mike and jen go right ahead my friend good evening how you guys doing? Hey, okay. Hello. Hey, okay. What's up, my man? I'm sure you got some some right. good stuff for us, as always. Oh, you know, I'm kind of in a death cult myself. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, terrible, terrible funeral humor. But uh, actually, I've been listening. But uh, on a side note, I'm applying for other jobs, looking like at hospice and things that might use my ability or my education in uh, the death and dying oh, or the post healthcare business. Um, but very good topic and something that I'm not, you know, too familiar with. So thank you, Jennifer and Michael for doing it. Um, I did know that there was a hexagon on Saturn. I found it curious, but I've never really had the time to investigate it. Um, Kind of quickly starting off with some things here. Found it curious that looking at Wikipedia that the hexagon rotates at the same period as Saturn's radial emissions from its interior. Was what it said. I found that curious. Uh, the hexagon does not shift in longitude like other clouds in the visible atmosphere. So when we were talking about the electric universe earlier, briefly, all of that kind of makes me kind of go hum. You know what's that about? Um, as far as belief, you, you know, I, I look at Saturn in your description in the beginning of the show as if that was kind of a, a low level sun, and that would be the time before time. You know, some people say that if you were to dig deep enough, we would find uh, another civilization totally not, you know, beyond the ancient Egyptians, uh, like you had said about the Sphinx possibly being a lot of old, a lot older and maybe a written record or some kind of a reset back then. I'm kind of rambling here too, but, um, no, Joe, you're awesome. The other thing that, thank you. The other thing that like Night Stalker was talking about as far as worship, let's say that we couldn't worship these things and this reality. We couldn't manifest them, I guess. Maybe we could manifest them, but not fully. But with the rise of the metaverse and the rise of these other things, these digital technologies, you can create whatever you want. I mean, let's face it, if you play video games, you fight the boss or whatever it is. My, you know, my son would fight the boss in those video games. If the metaverse in 10 years, let's face it, 10 or 15 years would be so perfect or close to perfection that you couldn't distinguish reality. And I know we've talked about this before. Um, maybe that focus would manifest itself in virtual reality. And let's face it, a lot of us maybe want to be Luddites and stay away from technology, but we're kind of forced into it from currency to everything we do, to our cars, to cameras, all of that stuff. So that might be our new gods. Um, I know you're familiar with Neil Diamond and you know, version of gods and in that show again it's the old gods versus the new gods but it is 
he totally is. Anyone who knows where he's totally concentrated, focused um, belief. And I look at it, you know, an example of that, I would say Pepe the Frog. We've talked about that before uh, with election cycles and how that meme was meme magic and it took off in a belief. You know, if you're looking to focus terror, you need to have a control. And maybe they can focus it on that side of death cult. Maybe some of them do. It's, um, it, it, it's terrible. It's terrible. I just see the future being ruled by politicians, kids, so empire, okay, and lawyers, basically. That's what I think we're going to be ruled by. Um, if we look at the population, obviously they do it through, through fear. We know that worldwide, since this pandemic, uh, there's going to be a drop in the birth rate. Part of me wants to believe that whoever's controlling this, there's maybe two camps. One camp that really is okay with doing the horrible, horrible stuff, and one camp that kind of wants to maybe do it disguised. So that we come to a decision where, like, I tell my kids, hey, don't have kids. You follow me? Don't have kids. Um, I've got people that I still go out and party with. They're in their 40s. And a lot of them don't have kids. I have kids. But they don't have kids, and they're enjoying... They're probably able to enjoy what they're doing a lot more than the way I used to because I chose a different path. Okay. But I look at my kids and I'm like, really, you know, they see what I put up with tonight. I was applying for a different job again. And my son comes out and he literally goes about time. He tells me about time, which I've never heard. And he's like, you come home miserable. He's like, it's about time you've applied for something else. It's this low level. And these last two years bears that out on top of everything else. It's this low level. We're all being subjugated. And, um, you know, the, the frog in the pot is the simplest, I guess, mechanism analogy that I can use for this. I think it's the frog in the pot. Boil the frog and, slowly. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, their belief, I, you know, but, but their belief, they, they can focus on that. I, I can't even, I come home, I can't focus on anything. You know, you got kids, you got bills, you got this, you got that. Those people that are elite, they have the ability to do whatever rituals they want. You know, I'll give you an example. You know, I looked at Madonna, picture of Madonna tonight. She's in her 60s. And when I was a kid, you know, I thought she was pretty and everything else. But I looked at her now, and I'm like, she looks like a, but she, Dorian Gray. You know, she looks pretty, but. She doesn't look, she looks like a totally different person to me. And, and whether it's Kabbalah or whatever it is she believes in and whatever work she's had, but they have the ability because they have the time, because they have the money to continue down this path and subjugate the rest of us. You know, on one end of the globe right now with the current crisis, you are seeing bloodshed, brother against brother, whatever your opinions are on that. And I think the population as a whole, all of us really do not want violence. I think most of us here that listen, we're like, we really don't need to be doing this. We really don't need to be killing each other like this. But they're all scared because we see that and we realize that. We realize what's going on, but the clamp down just keeps coming little by little, little by little, little by little. And, um, you know, in this country, I fear for it. I fear for some kind of, an, you know, an outbreak. It's kind of getting off subject, but when you start to rule by fear, something, somebody's going to snap somewhere. A leader is going to snap. An uh, individual is going to snap. A group is going to snap. And we don't know what the outcome is going to be. So, you know, any type of death cult is depressing. It's, uh, but that's what we're living in. That's what we're living. You know, that's what we're living in. Amen to that. Good, uh, good topic. Depressing. Thank you. <laughs> Depressing thank you. topic. I mean. All, yeah, right. All, 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 all uh, well, yeah, yeah. all good credit goes to Jennifer. He really here. said it all. You can blame the morbid he shit He really on said it all. <laughs> go ahead, Jennifer. What, yeah, do you, what do you have for Joe? You never get to talk to each other. So what do you got for Joe? Go right ahead. I love Joe. Hi, Joe. That was, you said it all. <laughs> You know, and the other thing, you know, too, I like you're watch, pointing out about... Well, 
Go, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Huh? Oh. No, uh-huh. just about the, um, you know, the money aspect is really weird, like you're pointing out. Like, at some point in, in history and, and in general, we we did lose track. It feels like, not everyone, but, you know, some people, will lose track about, like, trying to better this life, their lives, or the lives of others. And they just become in pursuit, like, just in pursuit of acquiring more and more money just for the sake of having it for power for the power it can give them in the sights of others even though i mean just you know they're not using their time and energy to better things they're using their time and energy just to get more and more which is exactly you know it seems like it's it's been we've been that they've been you know coerced and, and programmed to do so i agree well, yeah. and and you know, it is depressing, but it's a choice. I had this conversation. I had this conversation yesterday with somebody that was arguing with me about the conflict, and I was talking about the archetypes, and that comes up in this show. You know, I think most of us that really haven't drank the Kool Aid. I mean, some of us, I'm sure, have views to the right. Some of us have views to the left, but maybe those views aren't so extreme. Maybe those views come from what you said, that we want to better each other, that we maybe want to give a hand up to somebody to help them. But at the same time, you know, teach a man to fish, you know, you don't want to give the hand out to everybody. You want to teach them to be self-sufficient, but sometimes people need a little bit of a push and that's where that left, right, you know, clock comes in. Um, most of us maybe listening to the show, I think have that belief, but, um, Money is all corrupting. But when you read, you know, there's a good book about the ascent of money I've read. When you read about money, it's kind of a necessary evil mm-hmm. um, to kind of get us into developing things and to get us out and to get us out of trade and surf them and, you know, trading goods. Um, there was a, a time for money. But if it, if it was a true slide, measure you know, of value, Yeah. Go ahead, Jennifer. It's a it's weird, I, weird you're on saying, the phone in Discord. There's like a weird delay, so it's hard not to talk over each other. But go go ahead, Jennifer. Sorry about that. Oh no, what he was saying about the uh, brotherhood thing—that it is sad how they manipulate the, um, you know, to create a scenario where people will go to war and annihilate one another. It's and to do it out of love for their co-patriots in a way. It's. I mean, Joe's just really, you know, laying it down, honestly. Very well said, Joe. Get it, Joe. Get it, well, Joe. I mean, it's, it's, thank you. <laughs> uh, it, it maybe only because I see it. You know, here's the thing, you know. I think we lost the news, things like that. I try not to, but um, the last two years in the funeral industry, um, I'm going to say it out loud here. I'm, I'm in the middle of a lawsuit. I got to speak to a lawyer tomorrow because mm. I have seen at base level the evil and pettiness that people are capable of doing. And I've avoided, you know, I've taken sides here, I've taken sides there, and I try to do stuff maybe to help somebody else out in the end um, when it comes to laying somebody to rest. We'll leave it like that, but. Sometimes they get caught up in personal property. And I had an incident, you know, last year where there was total misrepresentation by both parties and somebody absconded with something they shouldn't have absconded with under the impression that they could take it. And I'm in trouble for that. And since I've, I'm not in trouble for it, but I've got to speak about it. And while nothing's really going to probably happen to me, they want to get my side of the story. But that alone, since I am deep down inside underneath my black heart, I guess pretty honest, it totally turned my stomach and they just took one. Now I've got a friend that's a doctor. I called him up. I'm like, you've been in trouble before. He's like, yeah, I've been in a malpractice lawsuit. He's like, I've been sued for everything. He says, that's why you have insurance. And he just goes on with his job. And I'm here saying to myself, well, he's a doctor. 
he makes quite a bit more than I do. But human nature, uh, finally, you know, human nature landed on my desk in the form of a letter from a lawyer. That and sucks. I might stay in the industry, I might not, but I see it low level, low level trauma every day. It's enough that they're coming in there and they're dead. And people, you know, people come in and they smile and they're like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, look, I go, this is the last place you want to be. That's why I tell people, I know you don't want to be here. You know, I'm brutally honest with some people. Sometimes I'm not. You beat around the bush, but low level, I have seen some shitty, shitty people say and do shitty, shitty things. And if I'm seeing it here, we're doing it to each other out in the streets wherever we can. That's for sure. Um, (laughs) So I'll leave you with that depressed note. Uh, Hopefully that energy (laughs) isn't going to worse with a a hexagon on another planet, but it does affect the population. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. We're, we're going to talk about that next, actually, the, the hexagon idea and the black cube. Uh, Joe in Florida, you're the best, my friend. Thank you for sharing. Uh, don't worry with the uh, the bad stuff because, uh, like I said, you're not in any trouble. You know you're not. Uh, keep your chin up. Keep on punching and just keep doing you, okay? It's going to work out. Have a good night, guys. Appreciate Thank it. you, Jennifer. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate the call. That's Joe in Florida, a longtime friend of the show. Uh, he's been calling us for a long time as well. Uh, like I said, like I always say, we're, we're, our cup runneth over here. We're blessed with so many amazing friends that, uh, from so many different walks of life. And that's what it's about, right? As always, I say, I say, and I mean this true diversity means you talk to everybody and it's okay. And as long as you can respect each other, what's the big deal? There's no big deal, right? Like we can talk about these things we can learn from each other. We can push forward and, you know, we can try and overcome uh, the, the human parts of us that wants to, that want to lash out. Out, right that that whole I, I talk about it a lot the idea of this propaganda and the division politic and all the rest of this just just a horrific ideas that are happening in, in humanity and like jennifer was saying too like like what is war what is this like like are we literally convincing people to to go kill each other in, in the name of love what is that what the hell does that even mean that doesn't make any sense at all yeah clearly upside down and backwards and a part of a part of living in the upside down so yeah yeah great stuff uh what else do you want to add to that to what joe said joe said there jennifer i don't want to add anything but uh no he's got a very good bird's eye view of he must have a very clear perspective of the nature of humanity on you know the scale that he's where he's the level that he's worked at and um yeah, an invaluable opinion for sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Joe's Joe's awesome. Hundred uh, percent. And if you guys didn't get the joke, uh, Joe works at a, a funeral parlor, and so when he said he called in and said, uh, "I kind of work in a death cult myself," well, that's that was a joke. <laughs> it was super funny if you knew, but if you didn't know, you're like, "What's this guy talking about?" <laughs> but super funny, super funny. Hundred uh, percent. So we're still taking your phone calls. We're we're going to get into this idea of the black cube and this hexagon on Saturn and how maybe it plays into this and this cube worship, which we haven't talked about just yet. But we're we're still talking about this tonight. That the the Saturn death cult. Have you heard? Of this what do you know about it and uh, is this real i think that's the question that's uh, again as you know uh, open-ended non-linear whatever you want to take this uh, for instance you know joe calls and he's talking about sort of how this applies to humanity in, in the current state night stalker calls and he's like hey uh, old ones and portals right and then you know it's just like that's the whole point of all this it's like let's talk about how this sort of relates to your idea about maybe rituals about maybe this idea of you know, this this um uh, uh, ubiquitous this death cult uh, again death culture is really what this is about not really some sort of actual like cthulhu type cult but or well maybe it is <laughs> 702-957-1037 702-957-1037 click the discord link at troubledminds.org we'll put you on the show easy as that let me make sure nobody's on discord here i think we're clear and good no no we got kelly let's go to kelly in colorado sorry bro i didn't see go right ahead my man hey good evening how you doing A-OK. Hi, Kelly. Hello, hello. Go right ahead, sir. Oh, okay. So, this death cult, all right? So, I, I kind of was traveling down this rabbit hole a little bit a while back. But, um, again, these, this weird connection going back to, like, ancient times, you know? So, kind of like the old ones, what he was, uh, what Nice Talker talks about, but more of in the Babylonian stories, that's, that's where that comes from, because Saturn, Saturn is known as, um, 
His name was uh, Anshar. And his wife was Kishar. And that was um, Jupiter. <clears throat> but the reason why those came from, and those came from the uh, the writing of the uh, the ancient Babylonian story in, uh, from the Enumia Leash. It's a, also known as the Seven tab Tablets of Creation. But in there, what the... Uh, it's all about like with the uh, you know the Anunnaki when they came here, they you know they're coming from out outside the galaxy right or outside of our at the time when they came in you know outside the uh, solar system. So when they came in, they were naming the planets after older kings, you know that was ruling over uh, their planet Nibiru. So that's the names of their you know their the kings of of uh of old right so if they're giving and it if, if that you know that whole that kind of weird where they do this um you know where they get back into this you know murdering people and stuff like that that's i don't know where that kind of turns into that not unless you know it's kind of a family tradition or family um you know down through the the centuries you know from old babylonian but uh, <clears throat> what's interesting is some of those, you know, the names that they had and some of the stories you were talking about earlier about like the, uh, what is it called, the, the Purple Dawn? You know, how the earth was probably before, you know, it was, what, like a purple haze? <clears throat> but to me, that kind of reminds me of some ancient, other ancient stories, you know, that's even like in... Uh, you know, from uh, some ancient tribes where that uh, the uh, witch doctor, what, uh, what's his name, uh, Mato. Oh, man, I'm going to mess his name up right now. Um, uh, I can't remember his name right now, but um, it'll come to me. But he talked about, like, uh, the time before the Earth, was, you know, didn't have a moon. That's also in, like, I think Greek or Roman stories where, or philosophers where they talk about there was a time before the moon, you know, and uh, maybe that, I don't know if, if there was a, you know, the time before no moon in, in the Sumerian stories with like the creation and, and the Enuma Leash before you have, you know, with, with was kind of like identical within the, the Bible, but before that it was the creation of the universe, right? And that's how the, the planets were formed. And, you know, I guess if the planet, if you had the the, or the planet Earth, after you know whatever the story, how the story goes, you know the destruction of the Tiamat, and then you know there was no moon here, right? If that was the case, <clears throat> you know those stories could be could be accurate. That that one time there was no there was no moon here, so the biggest thing in the sky would be Anshar and Kishar at the time, which would be Saturn and Jupiter. You know, there would be the bigger ones, you know, what they would call a star. But when you're looking at them, you, you can actually see, you know, no. if you go in a, in a place where there's no, you know, city lights, you know, light pollution where it's going to obstruct your, you know, your view. And if you're chasing the, you know, the, the star systems late at night where, you know, the, obviously there was no light like that back then, you know, you would probably see these things dancing around in the sky. So they... For me, that's, you know, that's where some of that ancient stuff comes from, but where they're going back into where, I don't know, it, it seemed to be a little bit obscured, you know, down through, through time where they're, you know, they started doing sacrifices, you know, and it kind of like, you know, some of the stuff they were doing, even like in the Bible, were sacrificing animals and stuff like that, but as in humans, you know, and these elitists now that, you know, that uh, it's kind of like you guys were talking earlier about the Georgia Guidestones, you know, that's, that's kind of, um, that's why, <laughs> I, I, that's some of the reasons why I don't trust, like, the government and stuff like that, man, because these, these are the people that are, you know, that are running some of these, you know, that have positions that are running the, you know, in, in government and Congress, you know. And that, that ends up to be a, a pretty scary situation when you're talking to, a global power like that, you know, missing children and stuff like that. That's, 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 um, I don't, I don't, I just, but I don't like it like that. 
Yeah, amen. There's a lot there, a lot to this. It is a. It's interesting that you brought up the time before the moon because we've talked about that uh, on this show in in sort of another context. But there are stories that go back, and it fits into this because that whole idea of Saturn is the first sun, and uh, that whole cosmology bit. It there was a time in this cosmology we're discussing type before the moon. So it, it picked, the, the Earth picked up the moon later on after it had uh, sort of uh, settled into the regular orbit around the sun that we know um anything there for for kelly jennifer no it's just always he always has like really interesting things to say about the the way it ties into the ancient babylonian stories and you know like shinar and sumar like the, the fact that they're they're probably the same thing and and i think he's right you know i mean the stories are there of course, of it's all Babylonian stories, but it seems like it's an it, it is apparently in every single culture. Like you even have um, the Eskimos, and um, I heard accounts basically all over the world that even in China and India, where they describe this purple dawn, this primordial uh, era of existence where we don't think that mankind was witness to this kind of event but it appears that they might have been to some kind of massive cosmological event even the uh quoxacodal or however you say his name down in um south america you know you have this account and somebody can probably say that <laughs> so, that name thank you thank you but uh <laughs> yes so, you know, he, when he's the feathered, um, exemplifying the feathered version of, they say Saturn, like as, the, as the, the star itself, Saturn, at the time when it was at war with this primordial monster that was, um, when it was birthing Venus, and that that dragon symbology that's all over the world is symbolic of what they were actually looking at in the sky, that the ancient man was actually looking at in the sky, and that uh, this wasn't far away, and it make, that always made sense to me, that it's so strange the amount of reverence they've given to these planetary systems when they didn't even have telescopes at the time, and the description, for example, of like Saturn's rings, and the way that they would um, display that as being vines, or as being, uh, you know, certain just the way that they would display it in their artwork is the same that they, they didn't, they did the same thing with Jupiter, their statues of Jupiter display rings. And we didn't see the uh, rings of Jupiter, I think until the seventies, I can't remember what it said, but yeah, I think it was in the seventies that they first were really observing it with the telescopes, but they knew about that in the ancient world. And we can speculate that they had telescopes or they were seeing it with the naked eye. And I think that's what's, that's mind blowing. Or if they would have been actually <laughs> maybe yeah, or remote or, viewing, or, or. <laughs> remote <laughs> viewing. <laughs> right? <laughs> they're they're like, like, hey, come come with me. We're gonna go check out Saturn tonight. <laughs> yeah. And the other weird thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. The other weird thing about the time thing that's really interesting is that in this cosmology thing, they're saying that you know, if you can imagine that there's nothing to tell time by. And imagine this primordial, you know, these people, you know, earliest, earliest people in the ancient, like the, anyway, not having any way, just looking out into a void, seeing no stars, nothing to tell time by at all because of that plasma sheath of the brown, you know, this of, of the dwarf star Saturn, of the brown dwarf star Saturn. So they couldn't even see any way to tell time until it got to where they were seeing the sun and how interesting then that they were telling the sun, you know, telling by the sun's shadow on the rings of Saturn. And that was their way of telling time and why they would associate it. So possibly, possibly, you know, yeah, pretty wild stuff. Uh, Kelly, what do you know about uh, this this idea of the, the hexagon on Saturn? And uh, what about this cube worship? Have you heard of this before? Yeah, I was actually going to get into that because that's where, you know, that kind of worship over, you know, Anshar at the time, you know, it was a, uh, it, it was, since it was, um, since it was the Saturn, right, the cube up on top. So that's passed down and in, into a lot of religions, you know, 
especially the older ones, you know, uh, you know, Christianity or even what uh, break away from them. You know, there was in, like in Russia, Orthodox, you know, they wear these black cubes on their on their head. You know, it's kind of like um, opso, kind of like the Jewish. They wear the hamaka on the back. There's they strap this little uh, black cube on their forehead. You know, when they're I guess they're in their holy day or whatever. And uh, um, also, you know, the black cube that's in uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia when they you know they they go around it, you know, counterclockwise. Mecca. Kaaba. Yep. Right. And Mecca. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's the Kaaba. And in the corner stone, you know, in the corner, I think it's the east stone, the east corner, where they have that stone where they said it fell out of the sky, which is a black, um, it's a black stone. It's like they think it's a meteorite, but they have never got to uh, test it yet, though. But yeah, that the black, the whole Saturn thing has been, um, it's it's an old motif, you know, and it's been passed down. So for me, like if we go into like the Anunnaki story, right? So you know, like they're they're praising, which is the okay, oh, which is An Anshar, right? Okay, Anshar is and, and those two and Kishar, they're they're the parents of the like he was the original king of uh, Nibiru, right? And he's a he was the uh, the um, Inki and Il and Lilson is. Uh, or dad is Anu or An or A A N, which is An or Anu A N U, right? So he was very powerful. He was he was the um, the uh, the, the next following king, right? So and when they talk about in Sumerian language or Sumerian talk, and they kind of like he is a supreme being, a king or being, they you know call him God back then, whatever you want to call him back then right so he was he was pronounced as that but it for them to you know to um more like worship uh saturn you know in that way it's it's for you know the even more that you know the more supreme that's over and new right so it's kind of interesting why they would do that but i don't know man like i said the whole blood blood sacrifice everything like that if that's got to be some new shit from, you know, if that's being passed down in their lineage, if it feels both stories are correct, like the Sumerians, or not the Sumerians, but the Anunnaki, these people that came from heaven, you know, to earth, who knows what they are, Nobirians, whatever, you know, we're, we're, if we're going with the story, that that's like still like a, like a, I don't know, man, for me, that's, that's, that's like a, a war still going on, you know? Well, especially with the stuff that's going on right now, each each um, so the civilization on this planet, you know, they 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 fight for some reason, right? Like it's kind of weird what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. Kind of really doesn't make sense why he would even attack them. You know, it's kind of like he didn't even have a knife. Well, we don't know the uh, the whole story why he would do that, but it's like these old, you know, these everybody's man. I could I, that that's. I could go back further for that, but that's that's a different story too, man. But I, I don't want to go down that far. <laughs> it's uh, it's funny how again, like a kind of everything leads into everything, doesn't it? Into everything else. Yeah. It's so it's so weird, man. All the all the connections. So so for those of you that don't know, I got this up on the screen. We've been showing this a little bit here and there, but there there is a hexagon on the northern pole of Saturn. And that's where the idea of this cube comes from. So if you look at the hexagon itself, and you just kind of draw in the lines, right? Like, remember the old uh, elementary school days when everybody was drawing cubes because they thought they were so cute because they could draw like a 3D thing. But it's basically a hexagon, and you just draw in the lines, right? Like the top, like the V, and then a line down from uh, from the center point about, uh, down to one of the other uh, hexagonal points. And you're basically creating a cube, and that's what this is. And this, this is a NASA image we're looking at here of um, uh, the actual hexagon in motion and so they've they've colored it they've done you know that that nasa you know uh, retouching they do to make it colorful but when you look at it with the, the naked eye or you know clearly with like just a regular satellite image it's not colorful like this it's it's dark it's it's like black and so the idea is that uh this uh, correct me if i'm wrong here because i'm again uh, oh, just a knucklehead on the internet with a microphone and i'm wrong about a lot of things but 
basically uh, the idea that this this cube on the top of Saturn is like uh, like Derek says in the chat here uh, are that uh, weird that the king of gods actually has a crown of rings but then also on the top of it on uh, like uh, Kelly was describing with uh, the, the Jewish tradition they have like the, the cube on their hat right in this case this is this would be on the top of the planet's head wouldn't it so this would be like a cube hat right so it, it, it's so it's so strange how this kind of like ties into everything and then and then like you said we got the cube the the mecca the counterclockwise that whole bit i mean it's, it's weird right it's, this is a lot of this and is really phone super hat. weird yeah go ahead i was gonna ask you uh, next jennifer go ahead on this it's it, tons of stuff here right no just well yeah but i mean like the just the cone hats too it made me think of that you know the conical hats depicted in all of the old artwork is really a always wondered what that was about and you see it and so much artwork and you've seen there it's been found on mummies um in china and it's wearing these pointy hats and it's known that a lot of the you know the the priests too in the in mesopotamia were wearing those conical hats and it's possible that they were imitating the spiraling or possibly the axis mundi that they would have seen maybe but i mean it's you know who knows but yeah so many weird things with the hats yeah super weird uh kelly kelly what has you got on this black cube stuff yeah i don't know man <clears throat> like see when they're when i was talking about earlier and, and it was russian orthodox that has that that wear that that black cube on the on the head okay. i don't know man when they that I was kind of like kind of weird, you know. I, I was just making reference with uh, I don't know if the Jewish religion has anything with that, but I know for a you know if you look it up, you can uh, like uh, cities, you know, I mean big cities in, in different countries. You know, I think I think we have one in D.C. There's one in uh, actually in the Vatican um, and Spain, and I can't remember the total name of the country, but they all have big. Um, big black cubes, you know, uh, as a sculptures, you know, out, out there by their main, I think their main, like their main capital uh, of the city, right? Kind of like the obelisk type thing. And that goes back into where you guys were talking about the all-seeing eye, you know. It, it's kind of weird, like even all these cultures didn't even ever meet each other, but yet they had representation of like the thing from the dock, behind the dock, uh, the dollar bill, was the pyramid with the eye on top but what's interesting is that with the you know they talk about the 13 step pyramid you know it's it's 13 steps on those pyramids and one was actually found in i think in uh ecuador in a cave and uh it was um it's a pyramid 13 steps too just like the one uh the thing you know that's behind the the dollar bill so this is has to be thousands of years before, you know, the America was even thought of. But on the bottom of it, it's pre-Sanskrit, and it's got, like, a star system on it. And I believe it's uh, the Palladian star system, the Seven Sisters, right, on the bottom of it. You'd have to check that out, too. I'd have to find that picture and kind of post it later on. But, yeah, man, it all goes, it all stems back, you know, that's what I'm saying. It goes, it goes stems back even into religion, but, that's how that stuff becomes cult, you know, different breakaways, you know, and who knows what these people are doing anymore. Yeah, pretty wild. Uh, what else you got there, uh, Jennifer, for Kelly, while we, while we got him on here? Um, the interesting thing, too, it's described that in this, uh, well, just in this cosmology, that they're saying that um, the Birkeley Current, when it was lined up and creating... Um, like a what would look like almost like a bridge going from the north pole up to um it was a visual effect where it appeared that it was like a and they like it was called the axis mundi and it's almost like a pyramid shape almost like a bridge i'm sure mike's seen it and in a lot of the research i was reading about they were saying that references such as jacob's ladder and um the stairway to heaven and those kinds of ideas when uh, that they're describing that too in the symbology and even the pyramids 
down in Mesoamerica, you know, Mesoamerica, and the way that the stairs and everything were set up, that it was symbolic of that in some way, possibly. I thought that was weird, too. Yeah, yeah, wild stuff. Uh, Night Stalker also posted in the, the general chat here on uh, Discord that uh, there's a 9-11 memorial, if you look at it. Uh, the, the the new memorial where the, the old Ground Zero was is um, what appears to be, it's like a fountain of like like dark stone. I've been there. I've actually been there and seen this with my own eyes. And it appears to be, it kind of drains the, the you know, kind of like this slow trickling water drains into what appears to be like a black cube. <laughs> Like, if that doesn't give you chills, I don't know what does. Like, like a like a scene of ritual sacrifice, like uh, with a black yes, cube of oil, right? I'm really bad at like interrupting. Almost no, you're good. But, Go like, ahead. Go ahead. they say that they say that um, you know when Isaac was nearly sacrificed. Some people say nearly. Some people say he was. You know, um, that that was like the that that was supposedly a cornerstone for a temple or something and so i've heard references to that too the cornerstone idea and that uh, and then the georgia guidestones really strange about the shape and the idea of it being this cornerstone idea and oh too um about the the formations using like the um like the cube artwork and everything but if you think about um, gosh, I'm losing my train of thought. I think I'm getting a little tired. But when you think <laughs> about like the, that, what's that? Um, like right now, for some reason, can't think of the 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 rock circle, the stone circle. What's um, like totally slipped my mind. But that they were using that, that it lines up perfectly for telling time. Also, too, with the Saturn Cosmos thing of Venus and Mars. And the one thing about Mars too, they found Mars meteorites, I guess, here on Earth. So there is, there are so many signs. That there was some kind of massive cosmic conflict. And then with the electrical universe thing, that on the moon, the pocking on the moon it has been simulated in laboratories. And it looks strikingly similar to the effects of electricity striking down and creating those kind of perfect circles that we see on the craters on the moon. So there is, and the idea that Venus may have been an electrical comet of sorts, just tearing up the sky. And taking on that um, that Medusa type of thing that people talk about in mythology, there was a lot going on. There must have been a lot going on in the skies back in the day. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That we got a phone call here. We got to take Kelly. But uh, what's your what's your thought here on what she said? And then we'll uh, keep on trucking. Uh, just real quick is uh, when she that that that's where the rabbit doubled down to because where she was even talking about too was uh, about the, the cornerstone. The cornerstone thing too, right? That's a that's a whole Freemason. That's where it leads into the whole Freemason thing. But you know they don't want to, and they're uh, Saturn believers as well. You know, what I mean they don't really want to talk about that. But that's it, it, even like um, when you see the old painting of uh, uh, President uh, Washington and he's setting the cornerstone in that painting. The cornerstone is black. It's a black cube. Right, that's the cornerstone of everything. When they were in the, it's a famous painting on her. Just check it out too, and and that's Freemasonry too. That like the cornerstone, I believe. And back then, and when they set buildings, it has to be a, a black cube, but like a black stone. Right. Which yeah, uh, there was a shit. ritual. Show. Go ahead. No, it's a rich ritual building. I mean, that sounds wild, but yeah, go ahead, Jennifer. Oh no, just the shift from stone working to brick making, making brick versus cutting stone. There was a shift there in civilization, I think, that that might be references to with the Masons. And with the Masons, too, I think that they represent the time of the silver priesthood is what it sounds like in the mythos. And that yeah. they are like um, representing the higher ideals initially, but were corrupted in some, as everything can be corrupted. Um, when they had, when there's so much power and knowledge, you know, but yeah, the Masons for sure, I think. 
Yeah, that, that's a whole nother, uh, pe- peel that off for another three hour discussion right there. The Masons in this right. rabbit hole, <laughs> how this can just seriously, that's what I'm saying. The more I was reading about this, the more I was like, oh God, this goes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This goes all <laughs> over the place. It's, it's impossible to kind of encapsulate it. And like, so if you, if you go through just the cosmology of this idea of the, the Saturn death cult, uh, where it began, we could do probably three hours just on the cosmology itself before it even gets into like the, the four ages and, you know, the rest of this and the priesthood and right. It's very complex. Yeah, it's extremely yeah. complex. Yeah. Uh, pretty wild stuff. Uh, so, so uh, we're, we're running out of time here. Jennifer, feel free to bounce whenever if you're a, you don't have to, but you, you I, I know how it is uh, getting into the third hour here. It's like, oh God, <laughs> like, oh, okay. are, are we, aren't we done with <laughs> this yet? <laughs> I get it. No. I know. I'm just saying, just saying, just, it, it's all good. It's all good. So the other caller if there's a caller i want to hear what he's going to say to you okay if i get off here i won't tell you (laughs) <laughs> okay. All right. You're good. You're good. Uh, appreciate it, Kelly. Thanks. Thanks for your thoughts. As always, uh, you're the best, my friend. Uh, you're welcome to stay there if you want to hang out to the end. If he's there. All right. Uh, all right. So let's go to. Uh, we're, we're still. Uh, we're still doing this. So we're here with Jennifer in Missouri. Uh, by the way, uh, please follow her YouTube channel. Uh, links in the description. If you scroll down, it's right there on top. I moved it right to the top so you could uh, give her a quick follow. And uh, please do. Let's inspire her to make more content. She's brilliant. Uh, this this show here. All all the good parts are because of her. All the bad parts of the show are because of me. This is all inspired by her. Not say well. that. <laughs> it's that's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Come on. Now. But uh, basically, basically, I mean, I'm I'm just saying. Jennifer's brilliant and we appreciate her very much so please uh, let's inspire her uh, to make some more content follow her YouTube channel links in the description uh, thanks again for spending your time with us Jennifer Let, let's go to Big Y what's up Big Y welcome to Trouble Mind you're on with Mike and Jennifer go right ahead hey what's up guys how's it going doing good doing good Hello. what's up my man what's on your mind how's tonight? It? well a uh, couple things just a uh, couple things that kind of like resonated I think it might have been Kelly who talked about it few days ago the pyramid code and how they would run water down the pyramids and it would create this energy flow it's kind of what that um you know memorial at the trade center really reminds me of it's something that's collecting the energy of that of that tragedy so it can be almost recycled you know that that you know that terrible that, that holds a lot of residual energy that terrible you know thing that happens it it can be recycled over and over and over again just by rain flowing through that, you know, I, at least in my belief. I don't know who else might think that as well, but it just kind of reminded me of that to where, you know, are they using it even more so than we, than we think, you know, as a something that can be harnessed because it's all about intent. You know, if everything's frequency, it's all about intent. You know, they can manifest something just as easily as we can, you know, if not even easier. Yeah, well, I mean, they do hold the, the the keys to the castle, right? And then like all all the money to build these things, and and that's a that's a fantastic point there. In that, uh, if you're sort of wanting to kind of keep that negative energy flowing from like a uh, let's let's call it uh, I don't know uh, let, let's be provocative and call it a ritual sacrifice. Uh, one way to do it would be have uh, to perpetually yeah. throw flow water through the spot. I, I think you're right, man. That's 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 a that's a creepy take. Here. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a really good one. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I think especially when you say it as, you know, ritual sacrifice and, you know, the uh, known fact of what truly happened to the trade centers of, you know, that, that planes can't do that to buildings, you know, and, and, and the idea that America is the war machine of the New World Order, you know, it would just make a lot of sense that we have this chip on our shoulder to do everything coming forth and they could just constantly be recycled for the next battle, the next battle, the next battle. I love it. Pretty wild. And and that water connection, right? Always goes back to, uh, back to night stalker and the portals and the water and uh, <laughs> all the rest of that. What you, what you got? Flowing. Yeah. Right. Always flowing. What you, what you got for big Y Jen? Well, we got mm-hmm. one. No, that's a really good point, you know, about the water flowing and how it's ever flowing. I was thinking of like, maybe it had something to do with the, the current, like the electricity current thing, that's an all pervasive thing going on. Mm-hmm. But the sacrifice reference is like, oh wow, whoa, yeah, that the flowing down the the black cube. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jeez. right, right. Is it directly giving that energy directly to right. Saturn? Like, like if if quantum entanglement is is to be, you know, what believed and it is true, you know, there's that those points of 
of, you know, equal and opposite reaction is that energy flow straight that, that people put into the uh, Kabbalistic, you know, practices, does that energy flow straight into Saturn and then back and forth? Or, you know, what is the whole purpose of it? One thing I think it's interesting about that too, is we tend to like our view in the Western world is kind of Christianized. So we see things in a duality of good and evil. And I think that something that's right. kind of shows in the Kabbalist perspective and also in this perspective is that Saturn, the Saturn worship, they don't really see the world that way. They're not seeing it like we're like we perceive it to be good versus evil. They just see this all pervasive mm-hmm. creator that also can be like a massive destroyer and they just want to rise above it and not be subjugated to it any longer, I think, because they know what it can do. And I think that they're also trying to you know, sympathetically through the rituals and everything to manipulate the power from it. So I think, well, you're, yeah. Mm-hmm. The- Good stuff, big guy. What, what else I you got for us, my friend? Very. Mm. It makes you think. I'll tell you what. I do have one more idea, though. There's something that kind of resonated from earlier in the show when you guys said something about, you know, the ages going from the golden age to silver, bronze, and then onto iron. And, like, so I was raised in a very Christian, very strict, I won't say cult, but some other people I've met that got out have called it a cult. I'm not going to say what it is. One thing is like, they did believe that the Sabbath was Saturday, that like the Catholic church totally flip-flopped that around for the sake of pagan worshipers, blah, blah, blah. But in church camp, and then even on like in throughout times, I remember them talking about this statue and how we're at the toes of like the iron age and like, I don't know. It just really resonated with me, especially after I read Michael, what you put this morning on about the, um, ritual abuse with the ritual abuse, you know, a couple of things I wouldn't say resonate with me personally, but I've known friends who have talked about this kind of stuff. It was like in the same manner, you know, this stuff is all like done like religiously and for an intent for some reason. And then I'd even have speakers or teachers come in and teach us as kids, you know, how to look at God, you know, if you have this, you know, how is it, how do we see him in this 4D dimension of time or, you know, trying to explain that to kids. And like, he would say, Oh, imagine if you have this piece of paper and you have this, you know, civilization on it, you know, somehow. And basically they understand length and width. They wouldn't understand depth. And if you, you know, say somehow start to put a finger down to the piece of paper and touch the paper so where they can see it, but they just can't comprehend it. That's how we would try to explain God in a fourth dimension. And I'm sitting here as I'm older now looking back on it. And it's almost like you're talking about dimensions in church. You're talking about like things that are just not normal Christian talk. So it just kind of resonated with like, was I a part of something that had like deeper beliefs that I just didn't even understand or know about? Yeah. You, you know, what's right. fascinating about that too, to me is that um, all of these, you know, like you, you can say cult or you can say religion and, you know, like it's probably like a very, very blurry line in many of these cases, but, but in my opinion, I'm not speaking for anybody else here, but, but interestingly that you, you seem to find that everybody is like, Oh, well, the real truth is this. And it seems like uh, they're kind of uh, breaking the rules of, you know, what the actual doctrine is like, uh, you know, the, the Catholicism, that's that, Oh, that's, that's the, that's the horse shit, right? That you don't, you don't need that. You need, you need my version, right? My version right. is this, like, this is the real stuff. That's the fake stuff. But then ev- everybody seems to have their own twist on it. And the more you start to like do that type of stuff. And I'm not, and I'm not saying the bastion of all things good is Catholic. Catholicism. But what I am saying is that the more you start to get people twisting this up in their own form, or may I say in their own image, right, this, this, these ideas become just a twisted mess. And so you don't even know what's good and what's bad anymore because everything's been so manipulated and twisted that uh, that idea right there is fascinating as hell to me. That's a, that's a whole nother uh, rabbit hole of another three hour conversation, just that in and of itself. But yeah, I'm, I'm totally glad you brought it up, kind of rounded us, rounded us out nicely here. What else you got for us, my friend, while we got you on? Well, I think what you said, too, at the end, you know, with where everything kind of gets muddled, I mean, that's the theory I have of the multiverse, how it's all, like, different. We all have a different perception from where we stand, and that can change from any, you know, given time. But also, too, like, the Gnostics talked about it, to the pure all is pure, and it's, like, to that point to where you realize, you know, my truth isn't your truth, so what is the truth? And now all we have at that point is, like, really the facts of what we know in this material world, but then we step outside, and then you have 
you know, outside the planet, time changes, uh, you know, multiple things physically change. So, so at, at what point, where are the rules? And if that is true, you know, to the pure, all is pure. Even the Gnostics talked about the Archons and Saturn being as Yaldabaoth, this like eater of worlds, as Jen said, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy how these things come back full circle. And then you look at it again, oh, wait, it came back again, full circle with the Nazis and the occultism. Oh, oh, wait, we won the war. Now Operation Paperclip comes in. Now we have uh, hundreds of scientists making kids in America. And now we have all these people that are in high ranking positions in America that literally adopted their parents' beliefs. And, and it, it's just, that's where you get in the death cult stuff. If people are really confused, in my opinion. It's, you know, you connect the dots, you have guys like Frank Olson, you have other guys in the CIA through all the clinical trials they had. Like you said, it's another three hour combo. It's yeah. all for that negative energy to keep cycling that in and keep sucking that in and keep us recycling That's- for whatever purpose, maybe consumption, who knows? Exactly right. Go ahead, Jen. Oh, with the, um, bringing up the aspect of like, with the, with Nazis, you know, they were saying that some of those experiments they were doing were actually to find out if they could achieve like um the longevity you know doing the exper- a lot of the experiments were to see about things like extending the life of the cell and under certain conditions and that they were doing a lot of those experiments free flowingly under the guise of all of that to further this same agenda of reaching some kind of god man status of rising above the human animal um way of existing and the possibly even the prototype for the just the annihil like to depopulate that could have been something that they were working at too with the eugenics and the uh sterilizing so it comes up over and over again like he was saying but there was something else just oh the priesthood thing during the silver times of the the silver priesthood era the setting of weights and measures if you think about like how we're measuring everything like um, with our physics and our sciences and everything, it's all coming from from them, from those priests who set those measures to begin with, because they're the one who's they're the ones who decided what would be, you know, what the measures would be for everything, and set that in place and kept the either the wisdom from the golden age or or who knows who, where they got it from or if they just knew it during that perfect time and they carried it on, but who's to say now they're even keeping accurate measures? It, it's it's really strange. I don't 100%, 100%. know. 100%. 100%. We're about out of time, Big Y. What's your final thought tonight, my man? Hey, I just want to say thanks uh, to you guys once again. Um, awesome stuff. And honestly, if this uh, is the case, then, heck, I guess we just better keep on trucking and uh, thinking positive. Maybe the light will save us, yeah? Amen, brother. Amen to that. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for calling. Where have you been all our life? Where have you been all our life, Big Y? Call in more often. We're, we're, we're missing you. We're missing you as part of this. I like, thanks, brother. I, I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to teach some kids this stuff too. So it's a, you know, you gotta you gotta dabble and juggle. Right on. I appreciate it as much as you can. Thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you for listening. Always a pleasure. Have a great night, brother. Cheers, guys. Likewise. Thanks a lot. Uh, good stuff, Big Y on YouTube. And uh, this is, again, like I said, uh, it's uh, it's pretty crazy, huh, Jen? The the embarrassment of riches, just the amount of people that, uh, yeah, right? Like so so many brilliant folks just call into the show and it's like, how the hell did we get here? How did we do this? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and it, well, it really helps long. Yeah. I'll tell you yeah. that because it kind of just spurs my mind to think about it different ways. Yeah, exactly. Always exactly. connection. And and always always bringing up things that you didn't consider. I mean, that that's probably like the cre- creepiest revelation of the night to me is like he kind of like slam dunked the end of it. Like, hey, look at that uh, yeah, 9-11 memorial with the cube in the water, right? It's like, oh, Ooh. God. <laughs> like, what's going on with that? <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Bailey said this in the chat a little ways up real quick too just to add and then uh, and then we'll uh, we'll finish with you there uh, Bailey says uh, some people think the energy is being harnessed to birth a new god oh boy oh boy mm. okay mm. <laughs> all right <laughs> all right that's a good <laughs> that's a good take right that's fun yeah. <laughs> yeah all right yeah. so we're, we're, on uh, that it, note 
Yeah, it's been three <laughs> hours. Wrap it up. Uh, and anything you want to, uh, real quick, j- please give Jennifer a follow one more time. Uh, brilliant. Uh, always, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for spending your time for us. I know it's a long three hours. By the way, you guys, if you want to be part of the show and a co host and all this stuff, you're all invited. You know it. Just let me know. Contact, reach out. That Trouble Minds Radio at Gmail. Get me on Discord, whatever. But you don't have to stay for the three, the full three hours. I, I understand. Like, it's, it's kind of like a tough it up, Michael Strange, like, I'll do it with you sort of thing. But if you want to, like, do two hours, you know what I mean? And then kind of go, like, grab a glass of wine and listen for the rest of it you know what i'm saying like that's totally cool too so i'm just saying you guys don't feel obligated to like to be like oh god is this... <laughs> i'm not saying you're doing that i'm just saying i know how it feels sometimes no. when, you're, when you're into the third hour and you're right. just like oh shit are we done yet that's what i'm saying i'm saying from my perspective you, you you're not acting like that no 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 no, no, no. Was... you're not acting like that i'm just saying i'm just saying i just just a psa to everybody out there that's like you you kind of get like uh everybody thinks they have to but no you could do like an hour you know like it doesn't matter so so i'm saying we're it's flexible and open don't worry about any of that stuff and i'm not saying i'm not trying to run you off either jen no but, i uh, I, w- I think I, I i will just i guess i'll just take off though okay this was great have a great night you're awesome mike no no you're awesome you too uh, appreciate it thank you very thank much you. we're out of here we're about to be out of here too so uh, again uh, please uh, go give jennifer a follow and i'm gonna smash the outro button and we're gonna do this and so the thing is this right uh, i don't know uh, what are the answers here i don't think there are any answers there's no answers to this. It's like, uh, well, more questions. I think I think as we do this, there's more questions. Uh, I'm sorry, Daryl's been there for a long time, too. Anything, Daryl, before we finish up here, if you're still there? If not, that's okay. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to play this outro music. Uh, Kelly, anything else while we got you, my friend? About to, about to smash this and roll. No, man. You guys, give us a good night. Everybody have a, have a good one. Stay safe. Appreciate it. You too. You too. There you go. All right. Uh, thank you again for uh, for being here. Thanks for thanks for uh, all your energy and time. Thanks for the, all the amazing calls and all the amazing chat. Thank you. A special thanks again to Jennifer. Please, like I said, she's she's brilliant. Uh, always calling into the show, contributing. And again, this uh, this this idea tonight of uh, this show was her idea. So uh, inspiration comes from all places, and uh, let's just keep inspiring each other. And uh, appreciate her very much. And uh, each and every one of you as well. Uh, the contributors are like a, like I always say and i mean this i mean you're you together we're us and uh very much on display tonight and so well what can you do as we finish and get the hell out of here well, it goes a little something like this if you want to help the show you know what to do uh listen to the podcast feed actually let's see we're, at, we're on the two hundred thousand download watch let's see how we're at let's see if we can uh take a look at this right now and see if we've clipped it clipped it while we were talking here maybe it's really close uh yeah yeah can you believe that i can't, I can't even believe that the, the number of downloads right now as of this moment for troubled minds since june 199,396 just on the podcast feed that doesn't include radio reach that doesn't include youtube that doesn't include rockfin or twitch or d live or anything else it doesn't include any of that that's just the podcast feed i'm telling you uh, this is a success beyond my wildest imagination and again back to the idea of hey amazing people getting together with amazing ideas right here case in point case in point so thank you so much again uh, to jennifer please 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 follow the youtube channel thanks again to everybody for participating if you want to help the show a few ways sub up on rockfin all the links are in the description uh, patreon you can sub up to twitch with uh, amazon prime at no additional cost you've already paid for it you may as well do that if you really love the show and you want to help most important or the only way the other way to to, to help the show without uh paying for anything just listen to the podcast feed spotify itunes uh stitcher wherever you listen to your podcast go find it there and uh, it helps the show and uh well spread the word also that's all the things what's up everybody follow the, the curious bunny on youtube how you doing penny i see out there and so uh as we finish thank you so much i i can't say it enough i promise you i'm not running for office yet but uh it, it's uh thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thanks for uh thanks for peeling out the time spending it with us your time and energy is the most important thing and let's get the hell out of here it finishes exactly like this Be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night.